welcome everyone to the Wednesday night live show. Tim is rocking out over there. I think he just he he loves that t- that tune at the end that there. Theme music, <laughs> man. It's my favorite song ever. <laughs> I actually have dreams of that song, you know, when I'm sleeping and it just keeps coming back at me towards <laughs> Just before, uh, just before you go into that, what is that deep sleep or REM, REM sleep? REM yeah. sleep. Yeah. I hear that. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> uh, yes, welcome everyone to the Wednesday Night Live show. We've got two guests tonight. We have Mr. Nick Orlando and Bud Feathers joining us. And uh, uh, tonight's show is a little bit different. Uh, we, we talked about doing this and uh, we wanted to give uh, the shops a, a voice and hear hear what's going on with them with all the regulations and changes, uh, whether they're federal or local. And I thought it'd be great to have a, a couple of shops on. Come on. We're going to do this. Uh, we're going to spread them out and give everybody a chance to come on and share their stories. Uh, I was going to try to have like a bunch on, but I felt, you know what? That's not fair. I wanted everyone to have uh, an opportunity to talk about their shop, their location, and, and what's going on within their community. So we got two tonight. We got Nick and Bud's going to be joining us. Uh, Nick's shops, of course, are in the uh, beautiful state of Florida. <laughs> Look at Bud. Hey, 100. Uh, yeah. And, and Bud's shops are in, uh, uh, let me see here, mile high, sometimes beautiful Colorado. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so gonna... whether you're in the cold weather or you're in the hot weather, we got you. Yeah, that's yeah. the th- that's the thing with Colorado because t- you say you were from Texas too, but in Colorado and Texas, kind of the same. You can drive an hour and all of a sudden you're in snow. You can go an hour yeah. the other direction; it's freaking sunshine. <laughs> Just go up the mountain. <laughs> yep, that's yep. yep, that's it. That's yep. it. So they're going to join us today and uh, share their uh, experiences and what they're going through uh, with their shops and what they're doing to keep their doors open and keep their employees employed. Right, guys. Sure. Sure, Tim says, yeah, sure. Yeah, well, no, I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah, and uh, everybody that's out there, we I got a poll on there on this page, so take some time to uh, do that poll. Let us know when's the last time you were in a vape shop. And also throughout the show, if you want to share, uh, I think it'd be kind of cool to share some of your uh, your first time in a vape shop, that experience, how, how, how it made you feel. Did you get the help you needed? Stuff like that. So if you want to share that in the chat, uh, we'll do our best to, to see those and read those. And uh, I thought it'd be kind of cool. We know we usually do a hellos, but I figured Tim will do it this way. Uh, share your first vape time experience in the vape shop. Well, ironically, it was very late in the process. I, I pretty much existed in the online presence when I got started. So for years, I never went into a vape shop. I, I mean, I, I discount the, the little strolls Thanks. by the kiosks in the mall. I don't count those because that wasn't, you know, those were sort of like the, the, the she, she kind of vape things. I saw a million of them just never went in. And then it wasn't until here living in Atlanta, um, that a neighbor of mine who I don't even know if he still vapes or not. He was like, yeah, man, they're having like some kind of, um, you know, pizza party thing or whatever. Do you want to go? It's right around the corner. And literally, I mean, it was like maybe not even half a mile away. <laughs> so I went over there. And of course, you know, at that point in time, I had gained a lot of knowledge and knew a lot more than I would have known if I needed help in a, in a vape shop. So no, no diss to the vape shops, but I w- went in there and uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I... I it wasn't an uncomfortable experience. I always just sort of felt, I felt a little out of place. I just didn't feel like it was like the environment. It, everybody seemed a lot younger, you know, I'm not that I'm some old fart or anything, but it just kind of just wasn't my vape shop. Maybe, maybe that's the best. Yeah. Way to put it. Yeah. Um, well, you came in late. So when you came in a few years ago, it was already 21. So you didn't get the experience like I did when I walked I didn't, in the first time. I didn't time. get yeah. to do like the the whole like uh, you know wall of carts, you know, and get to try twenty different flavors. Yeah, like right. when I went into the shop, I went into they were still mixing their own, and you know, and all they could do was just like put a drop on your finger, and you could kind of taste yeah. it to see <laughs> if you might want to buy it. Um, but I, I think I think for me the 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 one sort of odd thing was is you know i started out you know asking about squonks and stuff you know or like talking to him about devices and the guy behind the counter didn't even know what a squonk was 
<laughs> so, I mean, no, no harm, no foul. I mean, not everybody knows. Yeah. I figured right. if you work in a group shop, you'd at least know, you know, yeah. what a swamp yeah. is. You know. I think that comes down to just you know I think uh, when when you when you're in a local vape shop I think most of the time these guys will, will agree with me but you you're buying for the customer in your area, right? Yeah, I I mean I'm pretty sure this vape shop was probably not geared towards the more hobbyist kind of old school or you know long timer vapor. It seemed like it was more you know relevant to. Yeah you know, two, maybe two, three years, current devices, things that were easily accessible and popular at that time. Um, but yeah. now it's gone. So I'm just going to assume that the yeah. COVID train wrecked it or whatever, because I have, I mean, I drove by not that long ago because it was right in the same shop as there's a yeah. tattoo shop up there and there's an auto zone or whatever. And, and the signs off the, the facade and stuff. So I don't, I guess they just couldn't hang, but yeah. Allie, how about you? What was that first time experience well. <laughs> in the shop? So the first time I was in a vape shop was actually for the company that I work for. Um, I moved here 10 years ago. Um, they had just quit smoking themselves and they were um, out of their hair salon and tanning salon. They had like little tiny like starter kits, like a, a 650 battery, a disposable tank and a, a liquid in there that was, I think, a menthol or tobacco and then they they did have some of their own liquids um but it was they were just really getting started and i was smoking still um i had tried back home like the logics and stuff like that but i really only used those throwaways for like when it was snowing um and my boss said to me she's like you know do you smoke do you want to try a vape and she hooked me up she gave me a little 650 little m3 tank and some pina colada 18 milligram and and that was it for me so I, that was my first experience yeah. in the shop. Uh, see what you you three are the only ones that are actually in shops so it's going to be kind of interesting to see how how you guys go about uh, a new customer that's coming because you know mm -hmm. like you guys know when someone walks in, he's a newbie. You guys all know. Yep. I mean, it's just oh, yeah. like, it's like the light they goes do the off. Walk the counter, <laughs> like, the uh, newbie radar goes off. I <laughs> love, told me to I come love here. <laughs> my, my whole face lights up with joy when I see mm -hmm. newbies. And especially when I ask them the first question is, how many cigarettes are you smoking a yep. day? And don't lie to me. I'm not your mom. I'm not your <laughs> wife. And I'm not your dad. So, and they're like, uh, about a pack a day <laughs> or whatever. Yep. Isn't the ones funny I don't that really like are the see. ones. The ones yeah. I don't really like are the ones that are like net, they don't smoke at all. And it's just yeah. like, oh, yeah. but, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> you, it, isn't that funny that you still have to say that though? I'm not your mom, your dad. Don't lie to me. You know, it's yeah. like you still feel like when you're a smoker, you still feel like that's such a bad thing to tell somebody that you're a two pack a day smoker. Oh, well, you know, five, society, six a day. <laughs> it's, it's like the outside world has transformed into one big freaking high school. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all about, you know, people yeah, the dear lying to be accepted in, or whatever to be accepted. And it's like, yeah. shoot me straight because I don't yeah. really care. You know, I'm here to help you get into what you need, not really what you want or you yeah, think right. you want, you know. But anyways. Polly, when's, when's that, what was your first uh, vape shop experience there in Australia? That would have been back in late 2014 and it was one of the only vape shops here in sydney at the time but the people that owned it were actually really helpful i tried all of the different liquids that they had and the wife of the owner was actually there at the time as well and she ran the lab and i said well how do you go about mixing your own liquids and she said what do you want to do and I said, well, I don't like anything that you've got here. I said, <laughs> I, I, I want a white That's why I never yeah. opt to, to make my own juice. No nope. uh -huh. And then I said, well, I wanted a, a white chocolate cinnamon. Because there was a chocolate bar at the time that I was really into. I, I was bad on these things. And I wanted it to taste like that so I could give away the cigarettes. She helped me. And within 24 hours of stepping in there, I started my life as a vapor and as, as as a mixer it was really strange and ever since then that's what i've been doing so that was kind of like the beginning of your mixing days for you yeah exactly. that kind of got you yeah. into mixing huh yeah. well within 24 hours i went yeah. from a smoker straight into mixing no 
no passcode, no monopoly board. It was I can really see, strange. I can see Paul getting home and getting on Amazon and just ordering <laughs> everything, man. Uh, beakers, yeah. <laughs> Glass, yeah. Scales, yeah. Oh, mixers. <laughs> Uh we we won't go down that pathway. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Mr. Nick, what was it like for you that first time going into the vape shop? So my first experience was a flea market here in Florida. Um, you know, in 08, there's a company out there, Innovate. Um, you guys might be familiar. They have like a Heisenberg Innovate. that's really popular. Mm -hmm. Never heard so of it. So Jeff was <laughs> out there at a flea market and um it was before, obviously, all this happened. So I said, you know, to my wife, we need to open a store because it helped me. And, and the first real store I walked in was mine after I built it yeah. out. So yeah. gotcha. um, and there weren't flavors. So to Paul's point, we had to start mixing our own on site. So from 2013 to 2016, we mixed. And it was kind of like a barista thing. We had the the cough shields up in the sanitary as we could be in an environment that we didn't know anything about and you know people were walking in going what the hell is this and i'm like this is a vape shop it's about tobacco yeah. harm reduction get you quit smoking they're like what yeah. i'm like yeah because huh? we had you know a couple of other retailers in our plaza so they'd peek their head in like what the hell are you guys doing and it's like come on in check it out yeah and um we asked them if they smoke kind of qualify them and if they did then then that's kind of where it started and Obviously, the next year we we got involved in the uh, trade association here in the state, and it just kind of grew from there. But my first shop was my own. Your kinda own weird, huh? You said I'm buying it. <laughs> I said I've, I've got to make it right. Yeah, Nobody had yeah, a shop. Yeah, there yeah. was a totally wicked, probably thirty miles away, but they were around the same time we opened. Oh, okay. And I had been using the product since '08, and Here's how it started. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting there coaching soccer and I'm using these, um, the old bridge type e cigarettes from China. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was getting yeah. them for 60 bucks. <laughs> and, um, GEC inspired thing. I'm on the yeah. sidelines using those. It helped me quit smoking. And the parents are like, What the hell is that? I'm like, It's a cartomizer vape thing. Like, it's a yeah. cigarette, but yeah. it helped me quit. And they're like, Can you get some for me? Well, they were yeah. 60 bucks. So I wasn't making any profit. I was just getting them for the parents. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. I thought, I told my wife, I said, we need to open a store. And a year and a half later, she told me, because she never vaped or smoked. She just said, look, man, this has got to be worse than cigarettes. And I said, well, go find out before we open. Yeah. So I stayed doing my job while she went and did that. And then a year and a half later, she couldn't find anything. So we opened our store and walked in the door. And that was the first one I walked into. Nice. And now she's a huge advocate of the uh, product. Yeah. But That's right. Long yeah, story short, she did team. all the background stuff but it was kind of cool so my story is walked into my own yeah your wife's doing a better job than the fda <laughs> yeah she is, yeah, she is. <laughs> but how about you oh it was i'd have to say october of 2014 that i actually went into a vape shop and i was doing the little like maxes sigalike type things for about a year because I did bill collections. So I was in an office and a good way for them to keep us on the phones and everything else was give out these little vapes. So the vape shop was Golden Leaf and actually the owner was so awesome. He's the one that guided me on opening my own store. And he helped keep me off the cigarettes and just, he did it that way. And I was a pack to two pack a day smoker. So, you know, but it was an awesome shop. First cloud comp I ever went to. It was in the latter portion of 2014, December. And then, shoot, two months later, I was talking to a, my current partner. And we were talking about buying out a weed dispensary license, you know. And as much of a headache, the PEI, it was a lot of technical crap that we couldn't do it yet. And I said, well, let's do this because this helped me quit. He never smoked. He's a fireman and stuff. And... um He's like, let's do it. I, I'll pull out 50000 Boom. We opened up the shop, and the owner of Golden Leaf actually kind of guided me on, because I never owned my own business or a store, you know what I mean, that retail store. I mean, I sold a lot of drugs back in the early, late 80s, early 90s. Did a lot of them. I had, you know, rehabilitation. You know, I went through all that and stuff. But So that was like on my last vice. And I'm 50 now, and that was at 41 when I you know, actually quit. 
So, and I smoked for 30 years, but the vape shops were just so crucial and key to me. And it was, it just grew into a huge passion because I could actually do something that I really enjoyed doing, not vaping, but helping those smokers, you know, get a pass. Yeah, you you didn't do it for free juice. <laughs> no, no. Uh, hey, I did a lot of drugs. You get free that. drugs, that's, but that's yeah. The part. That's part right. of the perk. But, One yeah. crucial thing he told me though is he says, no matter what you do is you, always pay your taxes period that's the but, joke and I mean, yeah. they can arrest mm -hmm. al capone they can arrest joe blow from mm -hmm. cincinnati <laughs> mm -hmm. and i was doing i don't know if you guys remember gec chinese juice they came in like 15 mil bottles this oh that's 2014 and it was cartomizers yeah. 2013 yeah and I remember this mango one that I would get. God, it was like water, though. And I honestly believe that was a salt nick, but it was, you no, know, it was really rough. So, but yeah, a little cardamizer, a little freaking Kanger Tech. I bought a Kanger Tech Ego C, and that was like, oh my God, that's badass. And then I went from that, from like an 18 milligram, straight down to a, a six I tried on a mod because I bought a SIG, one, a SIG 100. The Sigali 100, I don't know if you remember those. It's a two-battery box mod, one of the first regulated ones. Tons of mech mods that were in that community. But I couldn't afford that because those were like $260, $300 at the time. Yeah. You know? But that little kangaroo tank GEC with the OCC coils, like the 1.0s and the 0.5s were sub -oming. It was like, oh, yeah. But I went from that to an RDA. And it was a uh, tugboat and a uh, freaking SIG, one, uh, SIG 100. And, I went straight down to three, like almost immediately. Or three, yeah. Milligrams. So I went from a pack to two packs within a month down to a three milligram band and still on the big boy. Yeah. It's like the same thing. That's so, awesome. Yeah. It's, it's but, not, it's awesome to see you like, well, four of you guys on this panel, you know, started vaping and then went into the business. So it, it, it's, it, it's great that, you know, you can, you know, this happened for you guys. My, my first experience, mine was bad the first one, but, and oh I realized it was just because at that time it was 18. So I went, when I walked into the first, the first time the vape shop, and this was a huge vape shop here in Modesto, and they had the huge long bar. They had about 15 chairs in there. It was like, it was an old bar that they turned into, you know, a, a sampling center. And there was just 18 year olds lined up and just sampling free juice. And I'm in there trying to, to figure out, you know, what I want, you know, what kind of device I want. And, nobody's helping me and i'm sitting there i'm so frustrated oh, man. yeah i'm so frustrated i'm like okay I, I don't belong in here you know and as i turned around to walk out the door uh my cousin worked there and i didn't realize at the time she was there and she goes hey john what are you doing in here and her her brother or her uncle owned the shop so after that it was just like uh, you know i became the the regular guy I was able to go in there and it was nice because you know like i learned how, you know, I learned how to change a coil. I, I learned how to make a coil. I learned, you know, what Ohm's law was. I learned just, you know, to taste different juices and, and find what I liked and enjoyed. And, and I think, you know, not having that, we talk about it all the time on the show is you're not going to get that from the C store guy. The C store no. guy doesn't give a shit. He's going to, what, what no. flavor you want? Okay. Grab it. If it works for you, it does. If it doesn't, it does. He doesn't care. He made mm -hmm. his $21. You know, he does, he's not going to tell you, you know, what milligrams is in there, what kind of, you know, where it's from, none of that stuff. So uh, yeah. that's why I, I think, you know, uh, trying to get back to, you know, getting these vape shops uh, running and going again and, and having people being able to walk into these places for the first time and actually get the education they need. Because, this you know, this can be a dangerous product if it's not handled properly and used properly. Right. So, Timmy, say hello to everybody. Yeah, baby. Uh, mic issue. Mic issue. We don't hear you, Tim. Hey, you hey everybody. And welcome to this week's edition of the Wednesday Night Live show. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell in your ears. There. I guess I just got a little excited because I had to crank my wrench hand on the on the YouTube side. Um, yeah, so let's start from the top and scroll our way down and welcome yeah. everybody to the show in the chat. We got some new uh, viewers uh, in the chat down there, a little bit lower. I'll get to you people. Don't worry. Everybody's in there. Mallory, first out of the gate. Great to see you, Mallory. How are you? Wonderful to see you. Steve's Vapes. 
Steve's Vapes. He owns all the vapes, everybody. <laughs> it's Steve's Vapes. Thanks, Steve, for uh, providing this life-saving technology for us there, brother. Uh, who else we got? We got uh, Pam Spragans. Great to see you. Uh, always great to see you. Uh, welcome to the show. I'm trying to go through all the, the usual riffraff here. Curtis Clemens. How you doing, brother? Great to see you. I'm glad I could take care of Revolt for you. And uh, thank you for offering your opinion on the FDA. I think we can all uh, <laughs> empathize with those exact words. Addy Tooney. Good to see you, Addy Tooney. I, I, I don't know if Addy's still here. I heard him. He's chimed in and said it's golf time. So I don't know if that means he's going golfing or he's just going to go hit the recliner and uh, watch a little golf. So I'm not We, quite we sure. golf. We golf. <laughs> yeah. uh, Kiki, good to see you. How are you? Great to see you on the show. Who else we got? I know we got uh, Michael Redfern in here. I saw him at one point in the game. Uh, Michael, uh, Michelle Elliott, great to see you. How are you doing, Michelle? Welcome to the show. Uh, I know Michael. There's Michael Redfern. I, I knew it. I said it before I saw him uh and scott runyon great to see you on the show thanks for joining great to see you here the swiss vapor we got somebody from switzerland gosh darn it isn't that great i'm expecting tho to show up here eventually from germany uh but great to see you on the show here swiss vapor and uh don't worry about being old school uh, a lot of us here are old school so uh you're in good company here tonight old school new school we welcome all schools as long as you're vaping that's all that we care Yep. Uh, and I think I might have got everybody <laughs> right on. So yeah, there it you is. did a good job, Tim. Excellent job. Excellent Thank job. You. Everybody, put your hands, that hands little mute Tim. problem at the beginning. I'll, I'll fix that next time. <laughs> good shot. It, you know, we've been doing this for two years, Tim. <laughs> I, I know. Look, I'm getting older. You know, sometimes my faculties don't uh, operate. Uh, uh, so, Bud, we're going to start off with you. Uh, tell a little everybody a little bit about yourself and uh, where your shops are located and uh, how you go well, about. I'm kind of curious to uh, kind of go about how you take care of that new customer. Well, we'll start off with locations. I started off in 2015 in march of 2015 uh with my main store here in lakewood or in lakewood colorado and it's bud's house of vape and i'm bud anyway no way uh, <laughs> yeah, just a little <laughs> bit i forgot the hype and then put the, the 80s gen x z on that back end kind of like yeah. jimmy's and all that the back of the day but anyways um I built up and my first two or uh, three years, I had gotten two other stores, one up in the mountain town of Frisco, Summit County, uh, Colorado, and another one in uh, in my hometown of Rosenberg, Richmond, Texas, which is like southwest of Houston. And uh, COVID killed that one. And oh, man. Four, 40 percent retail tax voted in by the the the, in, the extremely knowledge holding people of the summit county for a 40 percent retail tax plus the 8.9 percent uh other tax of uh, you know the, the city state and all that so about 50 percent you know total retail tax on those products so we went from hitting a fourteen thousand dollar month in january to what was three to four grand in february after it was implemented so we shut our doors like third month in uh three people lost their jobs which is awesome i guess but anyways um ignorance is bliss huh yeah um but anyway so now i'm back down just to my main corporate store and the customers i love it i'm on one of the main strips of denver which is colfax um we're on the west side so it's a little bit of a, a nicer income area not great but nicer than the east side of colfax which is like good kind of i guess mm. so we but we have people from the other side of town or other side of denver and aurora come out to see us and stuff because you know we try to to i almost make my shop like a for-profit aa meeting type thing so none of my people are paid commissions I don't believe in that because that inspires false sales. People just trying to give them in the most expensive stuff that, that is not yeah. going to be a success for me, myself, my partner, and or, you know, just our industry in general. Um, 
and certainly not for the customer or myself. That's a short, quick money way, you know, and I like to be able to build that. We do cigarette buyback. We, you know, we, we really are there for what they need, not really what they want. Right. They think they want, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Being in the, in the retail store there, Nick, um, and everybody else, but it's just the, the amazement on their face after like their third visit, those heavy smokers and the older ones, just that, that dude, I I, I wouldn't even charge them. You know what I mean? In fact, one lady, she was in her sixties, Barb, and I think she's on my Twitter. I think I posted her on there with, on my face, on my Twitter page for Bud's house. And, And, um, she came in with a carton of pyramid cigarettes. I don't know if you know, those are like the really cheap cardboard oh. cigarettes, you know, and she's an older lady and she had a carton of them and we do cigarette buyback. So she got one oh. of those zeros. You remember the zeros? And we got her on the very light salt neck because she was a heavy smoker. So a light salt neck to me, it's whatever you initially give that customer. They're only going to go down. Right. If you, if you, kind of work with them and take it personable and don't take it like, hello, thank you. Come again. Next. Hello. Thank you. Come again. Next. You know what I mean? Cause we get a lot of people and sometimes people walk out and that's because they're not getting what I'm trying to do and what I want to do. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's help you resolve that issue in your life. So you can have a few more years, you know, I lost my mom about four or five years ago. We're like generational smokers. So, you know, yeah, she died of lung cancer. So that was, and I could feel it too, even at 40, 41, you know, I could feel hacking up nasty brown crap. You know? Yeah. And as soon as I did this, I had that one day, two days of hacking up some pretty heavy stuff. And then after that, I could breathe, I could taste things, I could, and I still got my nicotine. Yeah. Like getting my cake and eating it too. Hey. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah, you brought up something that I think uh, we kind of all talked about it. Tim t- brought it up himself, being a little bit more of an expert when he walked into the vape shop for the first time. Does that make it? Does that make it more difficult for you guys? Or do you still want to be able to say, you know, because you know your education, you've seen a lot of people, you know what it takes to get someone off, but this guy comes in and he's just, you know. This is this is his thing. You guys just let it go and just, you know, hey, thank you for like, being a customer. I'm sorry, Nick, were you about to say something? No. Yeah. Um, I've got I've got three customers that are very much just like you. <laughs> <laughs> and they made their own juice, they did all this other stuff. I mean, I've got those customers too and it, it's it, it, it's like, hey, we're just here for when you really need us. We're not dependent on you. And that's how every customer is that I try to treat. You know what I mean? I keep it real with them. We drop the F bomb every once in a while. We, we get real with, you know, things going on in the world. You know what I mean? And that's it. But I always leave that up to you guys, you know, you, the customer, when you come in, those customers come in to determine how and what, and you know, what direction are we going to with communication? Yeah no matter what ballpark in the world you know, like my babe shop here it kind of turned into the barber shop it's like i'm walking yeah. into the old school fucking 70s barber shop where everyone's just kind of sitting there, everyone's sharing their stories uh this shop that i go to they do talk about what's going on with vaping uh, do you get those conversations in your shop do you guys talk about the regulations and what the fda is doing do you have mm-hmm. those types of conversations in your shop go ahead nick yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Um, That's you, brother. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm holding out. Nick's that, next. That, Nick's next on the interview. Okay. I'm holding out. <laughs> I didn't know if it was okay. but No, I no, got you. Um, no, but what I was going to say is, yes, it, 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 we have a bar there. It's a four-man seater. Used to, we'd have standing room, people standing behind people, people sitting at the bar. I miss that because everybody's, sorry, everybody's wanting those disposables. And that is so upsetting to me because it doesn't, it, it's, it's a band aid on their problem mm. in my perspective. If you know, a, a, a smoker, heavy smoker, I can attest that I've always had to do something with my hands. Always, yeah. always is going and going. Yeah. I'm ADD also though. So it's, it, and it helps me out so much to where, you know, 
keeping your hands busy, keeping yourself yeah. occupied, getting a certain amount of nicotine that you need, but just don't go back to those cigarettes. And you got to instill that. To, I, I try to instill that. My people are trained to instill that in every one of our customers. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just the way any and all retail stuff should be operated, especially well, if you're brick and mortar. Go ahead, yeah. Tim. Well, my, my question was <clears throat> for that client that walks in maybe that newer client that i'm sure a lot of why they buy the way that they do is because of intimidation right so i mean when we talk about the vaping you know biosphere in general i mean i think that that is probably they walk into a vape shop they don't really they don't know the right question to ask they don't really know how to engage and get the help that they probably are really truthfully looking for they're probably like, well, I don't want to get involved with something that's got 35 buttons and a screen and temperature numbers and all that stuff. So that that's off my checklist. And that might not even be the right device for them. But then, you know, you get to that right. point where they're like, OK, they don't e understand there's tweeners. You know, there's stuff that you can get that's small. That's con I don't want to say concealable, but small enough and portable that can go one way or the other with different juice options whether they want to refill it on their own or self-contained i'm thinking that a lot of people that are newer to the um vaping thing experience are probably like i'll just get a disposable and then i can walk right out i didn't have to ask a lot of questions I, there's not a lot of technology involved i just ra take it out of the wrapper and go and and well, one, we miss those opportunities to talk yeah, to them yeah one good trick that i try to use with uh that you brought that up with the disposables is the amount of money that they're spending on those disposables. Yeah. I bring that up to them because most of the people who are doing it are that are smokers, not the ones. I mean, there's going to be those ones that never smoked a cigarette day in their life. And we get a lot of those people coming in and getting disposables. Yeah. Right. You know, we get people that get offended when I'm like, look, let's go down to a three, you know, the three percents that we carry over here. Not as many flavor options, but it shouldn't be about that. It should be about you just told me you have a problem with it so let me help you and they get really offended but you just gotta take it with ease you know but how you do it is you have to tell them up front and it's all about the the retailer when it comes to that because you have to be able to entice them to take their time with us if they're in a hurry great be very compensated and say look we have a bar come out here you try these refillable ones you can bring and taper down your nicotine you know just stay away from the cigarettes and these are mostly the smokers if the other ones want to taper down i'm like okay but honestly nicotine by itself it's dude cigarettes have so many other chemicals in them and make it a lot more addictive i'm sorry i don't know what it is i'm not a scientist but that's another story for another time but yeah Allie, you, you, got you gotta be personable with your customers yeah no, I mean, I was just listening to him. Honestly, we do things really similarly where I work, uh, no commissions. Um, there's a strict script. We have a three month training, you know, before we let anybody be on their own. I mean, it's, it's all about giving somebody what they need, because if you give them what they need, they're going to have the best chance at success. Yeah. yeah. And they appreciate it because nine times out of 10, what they need is cheaper than what they were expecting. Right. Well, they appreciate it when they, they come love back you even more. anymore. That's for sure. <laughs> mm hmm. Right. Uh, you know, they love you more when they you see them in a week. And yeah. They and they come, come around the counter and they're trying to hug yeah. you and you're like, OK, mm -hmm. good, good for no you. touch, <laughs> no touch, no touch. Yeah, yeah. But I've had people go out and they lose their device or it gets stolen or something. They bought a pack of cigarettes and I'm like, well, you know, get your ass in here. I'll give you a yeah. percentage off of what you need to get going back off. And usually it's yeah. a lot more than what that pack, that old pack was. It was, you know, it was like a half. Or they go buy a jewel and they're like, why is this hurting my throat? It's a five and I do a six and I'm like, that's 50. That's 5%. Why am I so dizzy? Hey, hey, why am I hey, so dizzy? Jewels, jewels are almost six. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They're almost a six. They're 5.9, I think, or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but that's not six milligrams. That's 60 <laughs> yeah, milligrams. Yeah. 60. Right. right. I meant six. I meant. I and that's just goes to show you don't know what you're percentage. getting at the convenience store because yeah. right. that's where they'll right. go grab one and they're like, oh, this is really giving me like a headache. And I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, had my, I had my buddy who was like, I got a, I'm, I'm fucking, I got a headache. I feel like I'm dizzy. I said, where's the vape I got you? And I gave him a nice setup and he goes, well, I couldn't, I left it at home. So I stopped and I got this jewel. 
and I've been hitting this all day. And I was like, no, no, you can't yeah. hit that. Like you hit this. You that can't 5%, do that. It, just, it but, does fool a lot of people. to think, And that's that where works. I think vape shops are an important catalyst yeah. to the whole thing. If, if more people who were starting vaping were okay and had the confidence to walk into a, what they might perceive as a bit of an uncomfortable situation, they that's what they don't typically understand that there are multiple alternatives out there that you know can fit their their script what they need in order to give them that satisfying vape that, so that they avoid the cigarettes and all that other stuff but they don't understand they think that a jewel is just the same as yeah. you know the next thing on downline or even the disposables that even have variable nicotine content so they right. they miss out on an opportunity to really kind of find the right pocket vape for them that will be successful so they yeah. they throw away that jewel because they're like oh it's hurting my throat or i'm getting a head rush and they just you know it's it's a shame the manufacturers that... they are catching on to all that because yeah. we got a lot of new geek vape stuff that's really small vapor so in a can you know that will pack a punch but be small enough to where they can fit in their pockets yeah, yeah. and as long as you're a shop owner and you're going to adjust your products to those point, you know, to that going fad, you know, you'll be successful and you'll still be keeping them away from cigarettes, even the ones that never smoked. Yeah. That, that, that's the thing that I really loved in the beginning because it was like this, I, I had an, well, let's not say the very beginning, a, a couple of years into it. I felt like, okay, the, the industry is starting to realize that we are all different types of vapors and we all have different styles. Some of us wear suits, some of us wear work boots. Let's start making devices that cater to this group, this group, and this group. And I thought that was just amazing. I mean, the color thing blew me away. It was like, finally, I can buy, I can buy something that's oh, not black such a or chrome. Yeah, it's not yeah. black. It's not chrome. I could buy, right. I could buy a purple fucking rda oh my god you know? yeah. right. but that's that, well, the blood I, splatter old tugboats you know yeah. 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 whatever i mean i remember yeah i thought that was you know to me that was like the step that, that for me at that time i felt like okay this industry is, is moving along it's taking off and and then of course we all know uh, they took notice and and you know where we're, we're at where we're at today but that was the first thing i loved it was just like okay if I'm wearing a suit, I can go buy this mod and it'll look okay if I got it in here. It's small enough. It's like if I'm if I'm going to work and I'm in a construction site, grab that geek vape fucking tank that you can drop from, you know, two story. I mean, it was just to me, that was a sign of, a, of an industry that was starting to take off and take notice and starting to, uh, you know, cater to their, to their customers. Our problem was we gut check what for it four major industries, big state for the MSA money. Mm -hmm. We gut checked. Um, it's too effective. But, um, <laughs> correct, correct, correct. Uh, big, big pharma with their future because they're always thinking 10, 20 steps ahead. Mm -hmm. And so they know that if lung cancer start dying off from nobody smoking anymore, they're going to lose trillions in that. That's a very far one. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't say, I can say big tobacco wants to monopolize it. That's just their big company greed. But I don't think they're, they've helped us a couple of times. You know what I mean? More than that. I've been doing so many of these town meetings and stuff. You know, I went to Sacramento for their flavor ban crap. And, you know, I got there early enough to get inside and people were trying to get in that were locals. And I stepped out, gave up my space. We were standing room only and they still lost. But that's beside the point. It's just... You got checked too many big pockets. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Uh Paul, do you have a question for Bud? Yeah, I've got a couple of questions actually. Yes, sir. Now 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 that you see the transition of where the industry's headed, okay. A disposables, they do have their place, but mm -hmm. they're costing everyone an arm and a leg to keep going. And we're seeing yes, it here in Australia because of the prescription model that we have in play we, we're not allowed to we're not allowed to have nicotine okay my heart bleeds you know, for you guys you it, can it, have it but it can only be in a cigarette form oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry <Yeah. laughs> it is what it is you know what i mean <laughs> sorry oh I mean, no I've been, no I've been no up on the Maasi brothers oh wow. And, wow 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 yeah i'm thank, so sorry thank you. you guys are going thank you for that that is no, criminal but 
thank you for saying that because yes, sir. you're a hundred and ten percent right. But if you're over twelve, you can go to the store and buy patches, gums, and sprays. <laughs> go, 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 go! Figure right that shit out. Right next to the candy, love. Right next to the candy. <laughs> but it's bubblegum flavor. It's bubblegum flavor. Right. It's quite. Right. It's quite funny. I, over the next five years, it's not. It's really sad, and my heart does bleed for you and your your mates out there. Thank Sorry. you. Go ahead. Uh, um, over the next five years, where do you see the industry headed? Oh God, honestly, dead, dead. Wow. And I'm sorry to say this because the complete and utter bias from public health, and this is on our end. I'm sorry I'm being a little selfish because I'm right here in America. But you oh. guys, we're going to probably see something similar to you, where it'll oh, be prescription <laughs> only or tobacco only. And what that does, when they do that, they're doing a subliminal prohibition. They take away all your flavor options and leave you with this gnarly chemical-tasting tobacco. Not even like a nutty hazelnut caramel. I'd be okay with that. I'd do that. You know, I've even said in the next five years, I'll probably be buying a jewel because yeah. that's big money and big money. You got to pay to play, baby. Yeah. And that's the reality of America, whether it's the Bloods or the Crips, <laughs> the yeah. Democrats or the Republicans. It <laughs> doesn't the matter. It's and the Crips the in there, it's man. All about, it's all Easy. about the Easy. We don't want them baby. on us. <laughs> it's all about the Verde, baby. It's hey. all about that green. You know and remember, I mean? so, I'm only six hours from that location, so don't bring them up. I'm they, so I'm sorry for you, too. I had a – actually, I had a juice company. I forgot who it was. I, probably, I won't say, but I, they called me from Cali, and I'm like, why the fuck are you still there? <laughs> uh, you know how much business costs in other states? And if you're wanting money and you want to make money, you want to help this industry, move your ass to the fucking other state. Sorry. Go to Idaho. Go to go Montana. To Florida. Go to Florida. Yeah. Go to Florida. Go to Florida. Go to Florida. Go to <laughs> 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 Even better yet, shit. There's a building available down the road from Elon Musk in Texas. There we go. Do it. You know, yeah. do whatever you need. If you feel you need to go to Memphis, I don't give a fuck. But a any place shop is going to be cheaper. To just, don't go to, just don't go to Chicago, New York, oh. yeah. Miami. Michigan. Not Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Miami <laughs> and or uh California, you know, other than that, oh, hit it uh, up. Not, it, not Colorado either. Yeah, Colorado's yeah. about to be downhill yeah. anyway. So I, I like the idea of having a vape shop next to SpaceX there out there in Texas. <laughs> 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 Come get your Elon, 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 Elon Musk. Musk. That oh, could sorry, be Mr. that Ash could be not. really interesting. <laughs> That yeah. could be really interesting. <laughs> How Sorry, did that... Mr. Astronaut, but you can't take 18650s on this flight, okay? Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they will blow up. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but you can take... 21700? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, one more question. Didn't mean to interrupt you. I want to get one more question for you before we uh, ask uh, Nick some question here. Uh, I, how, now, I, how's your state and the city you live in accept it you or and how are you running through hoops are you doing certain things to keep them happy or what is it like what is it a pleasant well, experience having your shopping in uh in uh, what is having, it like? well the new proposition ee taxes is a wholesale tax and right now we're at i think 40 40 percent uh, wholesale tax now um if you and that's for any retailer any wholesaler or distribution, or any, um, uh, not not manufacturing, like Corey Vijo, we can get that, he, he creates it here, but it's only if you get nicotine from outside of the state. It's really weird, okay? Uh. But it's nicotine only, so if you can get zero juices from outside of the state and not be dealing with that tax. So there's been a couple of them that have been doing it, a couple of them give us problems, from there, the Ohio but, model. right. So, and I kind of split that with the customers, but anyways, that's beside the point. Um, then we're, we're, we're going to have another flavor ban and the way Colorado is, uh, the voting, it's all blue. So they got to copy what California does. And yeah. unfortunately that's sad to say it really is. This state used to be purple. It used to be like 
That was so awesome. But anyways, it's gone way downhill. So they're talking about a flavor ban. They're about to announce it. Once they do, they're just going it, to, it'll, it'll get voted in. They'll probably put it as a vote. And boom, it'll be enacted because if we got that property tax by a landslide that fast, we're doomed here in Colorado. So I'll be giving this stuff out. For <laughs> in the back. For, it's, price is going to be high. It's going to be limited supply. It'll be high. It's just a come little high. Come, come to the buds. Come to the buds. easy. If the doors <laughs> close, just come around the you back. Know, fuck just them, around I'll the learn back. how to make some nasty ass juice. They won't be that disappointed. <laughs> it's still safer, bitch, and it's only ten dollars for half a gallon. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I you Make know, with Colorado, protein. it's it's kind of a, a weird thing. I mean, you're right. I mean, everybody follows suit, especially on the West Coast. I mean, thank God it wasn't California at first. It started up a little further up north. It started up in Washington and kind of worked its way down into yeah California. And I kind of see it mm, pretty much going past Arizona and Texas and, and kind of pushing you guys. Because Arizona and Texas doesn't want to do anything California is doing. So, well, there's you, those lawsuits also with yeah. all the manufacturers, and if they can't do it in the feds, that's that's the neck way up there. It's federally illegal, and guess what? Or yeah. not approved. It's it's black market. So yeah. Well, hopefully it doesn't get to that, and and, and it's really nice to see that uh, you're going out and you're doing things. You went to to California to uh, to do yeah. your part, and you didn't even yeah. live there. So that to me, I that's was on awesome. the. We vape, we vote uh, with Amanda Wheeler. When she yeah. came here to Colorado, I went over there and we went to that Congress lady. Or the, what's her name? I, I don't even want to think about her anyways right now. <laughs> <laughs> or Caraveo. And Caraveo was her name. And she's just, uh, she wouldn't, they wouldn't even answer the door. They wouldn't even take the information from us. Nothing. It was, wow. it was horrific, dude. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's another reason why. And plus what Amanda, she went over to... Uh, and I think I know what she's doing, which is probably going to be really good. It's kind of like a background uh, 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 miracle for the industry in its whole. You know, even if it's going to be limited flavors, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. It'd be a side thing I would do, probably open up a bar and, you know, do that on the side. If the limitation's there and then allow can, them to vape it. You can go old school so. where you, you, it is a bar. You can come in there and vape. You can show your ID or a club. Private a club. club. Private club. club. Cl private yeah. club. Or we, yeah. w me and Tim and Paul and, and Allie, we thought about starting our own religion. So yeah. this way, yeah, I'm down. Yeah. Yeah. Church of Church of Vape, Church you know, of Vape, yeah, the Church, Church of Healthier Alternatives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, even better. I like that. I like well, that. Well, yeah. I I wanted to call it the Order of the Om, but you know, yeah, that, there you that, go. That works there you too. Go. Oh, they they can't mess God. with us. I mean, they can't mess with us. It's part of our religion. So yeah. you know, to vape. I, we, don't do, we don't do communion. We just hit our vape. I, <laughs> I want. I wonder if we could actually get that over the line in one state. That'd be, that'd be fun to watch. Oh, you'd have to pick one of those really, really, watch really the, the vapor state. migration. It'll be like Mecca and shit. You just see like miles of people like walking, walking down the street. You know, oh, you know, just like, balance. balance. You're gonna have, you gotta play it. You gotta play it up, man. You can't just. You know, just ballot like, and, you know, and load up the load up the hillbilly truck and move on over. No, you got to follow the paper plan. Has to be like an actual on foot migration, you know, <laughs> with your one wow. like roller suitcase. Hey, behind. it will be the best smelling church ever. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if yeah, you're who Catholic, opens up the new bakery, you know what down we're the street, talking about. The Catholics the know. Catholics know how to stink up a church with mm -hmm. that that Cookie. incense and stuff. The incense. Fudgy. <laughs> It would be the raspberry best smell. dragon lemonade flavor smell in there. It's yeah. just a combination of it all. Yeah, it'd be a little, be a hodgepodge of everything. Oh, yeah. I remember, I remember cloud comps. They smelled so good. Yeah, but uh, real, real quick, one more question: uh, Do you feel like you have other shops doing the same thing you're doing out there? Are are they oh. involved? Are they involved like you are? Are they going out? Are they talking to their customers? Are they telling them what's oh, going yeah. on? Okay. Oh, customer wise, yeah, they're all still doing the same thing as far as internal wise, like the future five years, as you were saying earlier. Um, they're all, we're just biding our time, investing monies and in other things, looking at. 
And you, so you guys are all looking out for each other. I mean, you got you're, they're attending these shop owners are attending city council meetings. They're going to state meetings and they're doing what's yeah. necessary to keep the doors open. That's awesome. Yeah, we are, but we're like we're for profit, so they don't listen to us. Yeah. Not enough consumers go. Not enough yeah. users go. Not enough ex smokers go. Yeah. And that's the issue. Yeah. But that's always been the issue. Yeah. Right. That's the problem with our deal. And we can tell them this as passionately and until we get purple in the face. But at the end of the day, <laughs> they're Americans. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know what I mean? Unless yeah. it's like, oh my God, I got to follow what Sarah's doing and all this and all that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Most of us in this industry are Gen X. We're considered the boomers. We're considered the evil ones. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm just looking at it in all different directions. The issues yeah. with China, the issues with Russia and all that stuff. You know, it's kind of like on the sidelines, but then there's that other second that's quadrupling down and trying to get things done federally really hardcore right now. So it's yeah. like, yeah. yeah, I always kind of, I always try to think, I mean, what is it going to take? What does it take before, you know, everyone has a different threshold, you know, what's going to eventually piss them off and, and get involved. And sometimes that's a little too late. And I hopefully, exactly. you know, people, <laughs> hopefully people realize exactly. that it's, that it, it is it, getting a little too late. That's, 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 but that's most societies because we're, and it's totally understandable because we're all in our own bubble because we all have our families. We all have yeah. direct friends, our trust ones, our loved ones, no matter who they are. And, you know, we just, yeah. when it hits us in the face, that's when we're like, oh, shit, bad. I didn't realize I was just, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, God. Now I got to go. I mean, I've had customers say, well, I guess I'm going to go back and smoke it when I tell them about a flavor band. And I'm like, no, you just need to show your ass up. <laughs> just show up. Yeah. Hell, a lot of them are doing Zoom because of COVID. Yeah, that's you know even better. I mean? it's, it's like, you're already in it's front like of your computer. You can <laughs> log in. No, you can, like, all yeah. the people that can get in here and then ask to chat and everything yeah. or stand up, they can do it all right here. So there's yeah. no excuse. You can do it on the shitter. Yeah. Just do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you still got that bathroom echo. So you're going to have to. No, turn... it, you know, it, it mutes everything. <laughs> oh, no. Then you have to hit the mic, too. Just don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. guys. Woo. That was a good one. That Open a, a window one. up in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, That's well, a anyway, uh, so. yeah, Let's get I into hope this. not. I'm praying not. And I'm yeah. praying for miracles that they let us keep our American dream. Yeah. yeah, that's what it comes down to. Mr. Nick Orlando is going to share hey. a little bit about a little bit about his uh, how things are going with for him there in Florida. You were a busy man this weekend or this week or the other day, yesterday. I think. Today, <laughs> today, yesterday. and today, and today, and <laughs> you're busy every day. <laughs> um, so I don't. I, I, I'll start with the shop thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Opened our first shop 2013. Uh, have opened, well, we went to 10, dropped down to five, or no, eight, then dropped down to five. Sold the three that we had in the malls because it was getting real sticky. We had beer, wine, vape, and uh, we ended up getting rid of the three in the malls and kept the five. Actually had four, then we moved to five. Um, each location has a salaried store lead. Um they're compensated, you know, by salary. We offer vision and dental plan, life insurance, competitive wages, and for our hourlies, they get the same offer. Um, bonuses, daily and monthly, and tips are all theirs. So wow. that's how we keep our employees. Um, because during the, the you know, <laughs> it was hard hiring people, but we wanted to be competitive in the market versus paying them a base salary or hourly more than, you know, a couple of bucks over um, minimum wage, we thought we'd end the incentives of insurance bonuses and tips. So they're tipped out every month. Uh, it's almost like a full paycheck to them. Very happy. Um, they're trained um, for two months. Um, the majority of people that we hire though are from our experiences. So I say that they've been, a lot of our clients are considered family members because they've been with us for so long. Um, so they get it, right? They know what 
Um, I'm not that shop owner that's in it for the coin. I'm in it for the cause. We don't have to sell the highest price. We don't have to make the best margins. Um, but it means more to us getting a conversion than making that extra 20 bucks. Um, and the people behind my counter understand that. So there's no like, I got to sell this and I got to sell that. No. If you get a conversion from a smoker, that's more important to me than, than making a sales day that's some outrageous number. Um, they get that. They, when a client comes in our door since 2013, when in each store I open, I usually work for four months by myself, open to close, uh, six, seven days a week. Um, if not, my son goes, but it's setting the tone for the community. We've always liked the community environment. We always like that. They know the owner. We know their family. The environment's like the old TV show cheers. When you come in and people are sitting there, you get the, Hey, Norm and all that. It's, it's kind of a cool thing. And they then lead these new potential clients through the process just by making friends, right? Sitting down, having a cup of coffee, chilling out, talking like it used to be when we built coils or drilled out airflow and tanks with the drill press or whatever we did, it still continues that process because our clients were from then a lot of them that chill in our shops. So when they get somebody new in there, they walk up to the counter and start basically selling for us because they know what it did for them and their family members and their friends. So it's very helpful to us. And that environment is key to us. Um, we don't have, uh, when we get somebody new, say with a disposable, and I know that was part of the conversation, the immediate conversation with our people is the cost effectiveness of going to an open system and making that conversion and have the, the variety that comes with that. Whether it be salt or whether it be traditional nicotine, um, not a big deal. We have to qualify them and understand what they need. And then we walk them through the process and their journey starts. And we're with them the entire way. Yeah. There are shops, you know, that they've had bad experiences, um, whether it be a convenience store, a smoke shop or other vape shops, they come into ours and it's a different environment. We like to set that tone a little differently. It's more homey. It's more community. It's more, hey, we're here for you. Um, and if you choose not to buy a vapor product today, at least when you're ready, come in and see us. We'll help you through the journey. Um, we talk about advocacy in the Florida Smoke Free Association. We talk about uh, ABM, ABA, all of them. They're all out there. Vapor technology, it's all over in our store with printouts. So they have a, a good scope of what we do and why we do it. And it usually blows their mind. Not everybody has the time to hear all that. Yeah. To Bud's point, they want to walk in, get a disposable. Hey, you got this disposable? No, but we have this one or... Hey, when you're ready to save some money, come back and see us. We'll give you a 20% off and we'll move you through the process and you'll be much more satisfied with something you can pick out yeah. by, over a, to the bar. But right, by a better vendor in our opinion of the product. And they usually have our consumers themselves and our people are advocacy members throughout the country, as well as the Florida smoke free. We won't carry anybody that's not, we won't carry anybody that's not started the PMTA process. Um, and if they made that TFN pivot, that's cool too. We, we carry them because they're members, right? Yeah. So that is kind of the way we do things. Um, hopefully I covered everything you guys wanted, but I'm open. Hit me with questions. Ladies, gentlemen, you have a question for Nick? Yeah. Well, I, I guess, one. go ahead, Paul. I've got one. Where Job do I send my where, where where do I send my resume for a start? Yeah, um, I, was, I, 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 I I'm I'm going back to Florida. I want to move back to Florida. Hell, you have my friggin' email. <laughs> no, only only joking about that. Nick, I know. <laughs> with 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 what you've what you guys have done in Florida, what's your win ratio now? I don't think you've lost anything so far going up against so the state from. 2014 mm -hmm. to now, there have been 43 bills um, that actually went and were going to get pushed through legislation, and we've actively affected the death of those bills. There have been several others that are pretty much you can't even count them. Like, you know, I just got back from Tallahassee for a bill. Session hasn't started, but we kind of got out in front of it. We had a, a reception at the Governor's Club. We invited every legislator in the Capitol to be there. My, my great lobby team did that for me. Um, we were ready for conversations. We hosted it, little hors d'oeuvres, drinks, and obviously 
vapor cigars because I wanted them to see there's a cigar humidor in the governor's club. So my goal was to bring those and have them prepared for them for when they got there, because I wanted them to see that vapor isn't the enemy. Vapor is actually something they could enjoy and it's less harmful alternative to combustible cigars or tobacco. In the, in Florida, you know, cigars are pretty huge. It's a huge Cuban community and they hand roll them on the streets. I don't want to snuff that out yeah. because everybody could enjoy a good cigar when they want to. I used to years ago, but I've found that vapor works for me and I choose not to use combustible tobacco, even in the cigar form. These guys really took it up and were like, holy crap, this is vapor and it's a cigar and it tastes like a cigar and it's soft so you can chew it or whatever, play it on a golf course. And I said, what's cool about it is you don't have to snub it out and fire it back up later. It's nasty. Throw it in your pocket and hit it when you want to. Yeah. So those kind of things is what we do, Paul, to kind of stop that legislation. And then we obviously the next days, because our governor called a special session on Friday, which kind of threw a wrench in our plan. Um, we hit the Capitol, had meetings set up with several legislators, um, both Senate and House. Uh, we had meetings with the Department of Business and Professional Regulations. They were nice enough to show up to our, our um, reception. We had some of the governor's team show up and we had just general conversation, both at the club and in their offices. And being out in front of those things is something that we need. And there is a bill now that that's looking to get rid of the preemption that our governor signed last year and give it back to the municipalities and local law enforcement people, um, committees and stuff. So and we're Nick, trying to kill Nick, that before it even gets seen. Nick wakes up and he hears stomp. But look, it's not Nick. I, I want to make it very clear, Paul. It's everyone, you, yeah, I know. It is the organization <laughs> that funds that is funded by its members, and right now it's thirty-eight members, which is kind of sad. Um, but we're hoping to get some membership people that actually want to do business responsibly in the state of Florida. So. That's kind of where we're at. Um, it's very costly to do these things, especially receptions at the governor's club. I mean, but it wasn't like we had a, a check. We were, we were waiting on the invoice. So those kind of things we have to pay for. But that's how you stop things from even becoming a bill, right? And that's the success rate of the organization that I have the privilege of being a part of and the time I get to spend doing what I love to do to help promote these products. And those kind of things is, you know, how you, how you crush things before they become a bill. And if they become a bill, then you go crush it that way. Yeah. But 43 and 0 right now, actual bills, uh, probably hundreds uh, uh, of uh, uh. Never became a bill. <laughs> Nick, Nick and his uh, uh, USA uh, boxers, like Rocky coming out. Da, da, da. Speaking uh, of Rocky. The association that I'm part of is with uh, Rocky Mountain Point Free Alliance and here in Denver, Colorado. So, and part of Arizona. Well, we're with Amanda too. Yeah. So, yeah. so yep. a shout out for those guys too here in Colorado. Or, yeah, we or have some, who did donate, we have, Allie, from Rocky on the show? Did we have somebody from Rocky Mountain? I think we did, didn't we, Tim? I think yeah, we did. We had Amanda one on here. We had Amanda. Yeah, we had Amanda. On here. Amanda. <laughs> she does Colorado and Arizona. Yeah, that's we right. We got two for one. <laughs> two, yeah. two, a two and for then federal. Two for <laughs> AVM. She's good too. Uh, she knows exactly how to talk to those people and deal with all that yeah. law stuff. She's and that's why when she went over to uh, PMI, it's. I think it's going to help all of us out. Yeah, we do. It's better we than a in full her. slaughter because it's not looking good with the FDA and they have full control. Tim, you're itching to say something. I can tell. I've known now for many years Sorry, what that look is. <laughs> no, well, I was I was going to ask Nick and and Bud. You know, based on the shift in the business and you know just all of the the newer nuance. I mean, obviously trying to help the the newer the I mean the newer vapors find something that fits them with the shift and the change in the online market, you know, we were talking about this for the show even started. We were trying to figure out how much shipping would cost if John ordered X or whatever. Yeah. And um, 
So obviously, you know, other channels have been kind of shut down in terms of cost value. Do you find that that has brought some of the the more longtime vapors into the shop looking for particular things? Um, you know, just the, the guys that walk in the kind of are like me, they already feel like we know everything. Um, yeah. But they, they're no, looking for their channel, too. They are the ones, I mean, again, it's case by case scenario. And, you know, because all of us are different, but those type of customers, I, I, yes, we've been seeing an influence and uh, influx in that from the PACT Act where, you know, because, and that was bring what I meant to bring up earlier about the taxation and stuff for mm -hmm. our taxation in our state is consumers have been coming in and buying it from us because the IRS or the, not the IRS, but the Colorado State Revenue uh, Department, they are like going after those consumers that are buying it online and not paying that tax or at that right. company that sold it to them. Do you see? Because they were the ones that initiated to bring it into the state. And yep. that's what I was, I, I don't know if I had mentioned that earlier, but that was, yeah. So retailers, uh, we're responsible if we bring it in from out of state. So our, I went from 10 distributor availability because I refused to pay my CPA extra money to file that separate tax and, and calculate all that stuff. Do you right. see what I mean? And our local distributors are taking care of that for us. Right. Does that make sense? So, so we've I go seen it as well. Two or three, and that's it. And we've seen the influx in, believe it or not, the rebuildable RDA market was pretty much dead. Yeah. So yeah. what we're seeing Ours now too. is I got people coming in asking for coil, coil, wire, uh, Kenthal and cotton. Wire. So these yep. guys are coming back. Yeah, yeah. So it's like I, I happen to have a to ton of that. Hundred yes. <laughs> percent. Well, I haven't had as much as you there in Florida because here in Denver, it's, it's a, it was such a small one, and it's like a lot of those guys went and moved over to the coil to the premains, and so they just all got out of it here. Every once in a while, I get those here. I still got a ton of wire from kidney punches, you know, <laughs> from twenty eight to freaking twenty eighteen yeah. for those insane ones. You know, right, well, I still got that, a couple of rouleaux here and there. But also, yeah. Well, that's why I was asking, because, I mean, obviously, with the constraints that keep coming down the pipeline, you know, meaning, you know, it's harder to get particular things. I mean, even, you know, I because I've, I've bounced in and out from time to time, depending on my lazy level. You know, it's like I'll, I'll you know, like now I'm doing an RTA and, and yep. you know, that, Max you know, Blake. the usual, which is fine for me. I mean, oh, I posted yeah. something on Twitter the other day where I was like, you know, I'm sitting here complaining to myself that, you know, I'm moaning that the most annoying part of vaping is having to change your wick like every <laughs> couple of weeks. And then I followed that thought up real quick with like, well, at least I'm not smoking, right. you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, you, you kind of weigh the balance of, you know, like, exactly. you, know, the, you know, sometimes there's shit you got to do that you don't really want to do, but you realize that it's probably worth the time that you're taking. So my question really was leading down the path, like, if you find some of the older vapor, like the long time vapors coming in um, that, you know, maybe, you know, they're not hunting for a new device. They're not going to ask you like, you know, hey, do you have the, you know, the latest, you know, um, uh, uh, mech mod on the shelf and stuff like right. that. Um, do you find that that opens the door to talk to customers about thinking about taking that route? should things get tougher and tougher? Because, you know, they're not going to be able to get the disposables. They're not going to be able to get you know, the, 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 the pre-made coils. Cause they're just, it's going to be tougher for you to get them, let alone. I them. do pass on like some of our connections, which do retail side too, like kidney puncher wire. I refer them to that. I will also try to see if they can get that online versus anything else. The hell a clone. If they're that seeking that type of device, even a clone is better than an authentic. I mean, we all know that Kennedy vapor shut down. So a lot yeah. of the big, you know, the, the big nice ones that are doing it, they're all, the demand in general nationwide has sunk to an all time low to where it can't sustain that. that making, that making that product. Yeah. yeah. If I'm saying that. Correctly. So I see 10, and, I'm, I'm actually selling T3S but, coil, uh, tanks and stuff again, and kangaroo coils, coils, believe it or not. But like I, mean, I was what saying, I got. there is, there is one or two shops here, which would be um, vapor gate original store and also vapor clouds on 64th and wads. If okay. anybody's paying attention, but those guys, they do probably still carry them from my understanding the last time I went and said hi to those guys. Yeah. Do you see? I, I so there are two that. shops, but it's. Yoshi still got it's, them. They yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
I, I miss that. I mean, I, I talked about it on the show. Mexico. They used to do a, a class on Sunday at the at the at Planet of Planet of the Vapes here that was open here, but they used to have a sh a, a, a shop on Sunday where you brought in your drill, they provided you wire, and they, and you had this big, huge table. There was 10, 15 people sitting at this table learning how to wrap coils and you know, how to learning how to use And I thought that was the coolest fucking thing ever. But it was funny. They had no RDAs for sale. There was not one See, RDA for sale in that some shop. Of them, and some <laughs> of them just for some reason could not grasp basic Ohm's Law. Yeah, people got you lazy. Know, too. I remember, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Was that, that old that old meme where uh, I got lazy. I just saw it today? I just saw it today where it said you learn more about math being a vapor than you did when you were in school. <laughs> we called it vape math. Yeah, vape half math. a zero and half a six is your three pull, and now you got two of them. I want to. I want to. I want to ask. Uh, I want to ask Allie a, a, a little bit because she's she sees it every day as well. You know, Allie, are, are you, do you see some of the same things that uh, Nick and and Bud are going through there at your guys' shop? We definitely have a lot more retail traffic. It's definitely picked back up. Um, but we've always carried the old school stuff because we have a lot of old school vapors. We carry yeah. the BDC tanks in our E-Leaf 30 watts. Like, I mean, there's some that yeah. people that just don't want to change. I mean, shit, yeah. it was hard enough to get them to change from smoking cigarettes. They're not changing their device. Yeah. So, you know, we carry everything and we at least carry the coils for stuff that we can no longer get. We just try to get the coils for so at least they can maintain the stuff that they have. Um, the only thing I've noticed, and I don't know if you guys have noticed it, is that there are these vape shops popping up everywhere um, in in my area. And it's it just seems like the more heat there is on the vapor industry, the more of these little like shops I see pop up and they have like these millions of like lights in the windows and they just say tobacco shop, yeah. tobacco vape. That's what they're called, tobacco vape. <laughs> um, That's and, a, like a smoke yeah. shop. Yeah, yeah, but they're everywhere. They don't ID. They, I mean, they, they carry bootleg stuff because I've went in there and bought the stuff uh, to see if it's legitimate or just to see how the experience was just because I like to shop new places that open in my area. Dirt um, cheap. Dirt cheap. Old, outdated. Um, yeah, nobody's out there any questions. Like yeah, doesn't really know anything <laughs> about the product that they have. I think that's been the most frustrating thing for me because here we are trying so hard to show how legitimate vape shops are. <laughs> And you have these right. little places popping up that just want to sell disposables and, and make money as, as fast as they can. And they don't care if they get shut down when shit goes down the toilet. They just want to make the money while they can. So I was just curious to see if you guys are seeing that kind of stuff, too. Absolutely, well, we are. Yeah, and, and they don't and last. Here in Denver, it's been happening since we became legal, actually, here. Like, there was head shops everywhere. And then as soon as vaping came out, they adopted, like, portions of that. But they didn't know anything about it. Yeah. Was it they were just trying to make the money on the money train? I think they're targeting um, us too. We so, have 16 locations, and there's one like across the street from almost every location. No, like, so, so let, me, let me, I'll break it down for you, Allie. Um, here in Florida, I'm I, I have a friend that there is a certain demographic that comes over to our country. And in order to get family members visas to work here and live here, yeah. they open up these shops. They don't care what the price is and what the margin is. The fact of the matter is they want their members here. Yep. So they open up these retail brick and mortars. They do group buys interfamily, like one will buy liquid, one will buy coils, one will buy tanks, one will buy devices, one will buy disposables. And then they split the, the, the wealth amongst the families and fill the stores yeah. and that person or people work the store solely. That is their job, but they're here in our country yep, yep. and they negotiate now, too. With so the, the uh, loss of the property. Yeah. Because they become master so. distro when they're buying pallets of it to split up amongst yep. 30, 50 locations. So the, the end game is not profitability. The end game is getting family members into the country and, getting them a visa here. Right. So this is our battle at this yeah. point in time. I was fortunate enough to share this with our legislators to say, there's an industry of responsible business owners. Yep. And then there's an industry with alternative motives. Right. And these are the alternative motives, mm -hmm. um, but it's legal. So yep. this is my competition. 
So as you move through those stores and they get enough bad devices that these people won't exchange because they could really give two shits, they end up coming to my store and that's when I got them. Well, that's so, how I found out about them because their customers are bringing in their bootleg elf bars. Yeah. And so I went over there <laughs> from the and smoke I, shop. And and I took them out to my car and I scanned them. And of course, they don't, they, they just bring me to, you know, a 404. So I walk back in and I'm like, these aren't legitimate elf bars. Yeah. And we the guy's like, well, it's not my problem. It says yeah. what it says on there. It says elf bar. And I'm like, but it's not an elf bar. <laughs> the guy behind the counter doesn't even know what the yeah. is. Yeah, no, well, he, he, like throws yeah, he throws that. Yeah, he throws that. It really looks like a duck. It, it says like elf bar <laughs> on it, ma'am. And I'm like, well, no, there's, 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 there's Nike and then there's Psyche. Right. <laughs> right. There's Gucci and there's Hoochie. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I mean, it's there's clothes yeah. of everything out there. That's one thing. I the letters are different. The font's different. The yeah, the colors different. are different. Yep. Yeah, yeah everything. Different and they size, even yeah. have the little sticker on the outside to scan. It just yep. brings you to a, a 404 yep. error and tells you that it's not found. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Clone. Yeah. So that is what we're up against. So yeah. same thing yeah. everywhere. Um, yeah. Here in Florida, it's pretty prevalent. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's what I get to battle. I'm like, I literally looked but at that's him where like, we this is get... why we can't have nice things because of people like you. <laughs> Yeah. And that's where that's where we get consistent customers that keep coming in, keep seeing, but more and more and more. Those it's great. Oh I yeah. Like, well, one of the girls know, that works in the shop was like, "Oh, Allison works at the warehouse, and she wrote this article about these elf bars, and she prints it out, and she's like, this is how you verify if it's real or not.' Because I, you know, I saw that was an issue, and I'm like, people need to know about this because I feel like a lot of people, especially yep. consumer advocates, didn't really know. I had a lot of people say, mm -hmm. "I'm pretty sure I've vaped on a bootleg." <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but that's it it's burned even, my throat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, it's an even bigger risk because the fact that they are bootlegged, people need to understand that they potentially aren't very safe, and that's what's yeah. going to be the next target on our back. Is some somebody's going to go buy bootlegs from some you know crappy you know pop up There's shop. Behind me. I just yeah. Walked out to no. the car. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just saying it. I mean, that's yeah. going to be the next news article. Is you know, a bunch of people dropping right. dead from some, and they some, won't, and they won't yeah. clarify if it was a fake vape. Just like they won't clarify no. if it was oh, right. some black market THC yeah. vape. They, they're not. That will be a rough one to battle. Yeah. That yeah. will be a really rough one to battle if it ever yeah. comes up, oh, and I hope it never does. Yeah. No. Yeah, I, it, it's ridiculous. Not. I mean. That's what the, that's what I thought I, I say about the vape shop. The vape shop is a place I called it vape school, and that was what, what it was for me is vape school. And I just I find it so weird that you know you would go into a C store and just buy something, uh, you know, but you'll spend 17 hours, you know, uh, reading reviews of a coffee maker. <laughs> but but yet you're you're here you're talking about something hey, that you're inhaling in your body <laughs> yeah two, you're inhaling in your body you know it's going to save your life and you know you're going to put it on you know whatever I'm not going to say any names and and whatever but you know you're going to give it up to this guy at the convenience store to just grab something off of a shelf can't tell you anything about it can't tell you where it came from uh nothing not the milligrams nothing but yes people you know, don't care it was much yeah. easier to just grab a pack of smokes and a lighter they don't care yeah yeah, yeah. i know but care. but that's what i'm saying this is this isn't just you know something that sits on your desk this is something you're putting in your fucking body, dude. Right. I mean, you, you, I mean, that's the first thing I did. I don't know about you guys, you know, even when my mom said, Hey, you, when she solved the blues on the Donahue show, she's like, Hey, uh, you know, go try this before I even tried it. I, I went online. I was like, okay, what the fuck is this thing? You know, why is this, why is this working for everybody? Well, you know, what's in it? Where is it made? I, I did this whole thing before I even went to Walgreens to buy that first set up from them yeah but how many people told did your mom tell that and how many really did the research i mean like i said if, if it was oh, i'm the only one that on she cares about. come on we're talking about italian mom she only cares about her boys she don't care I'm just about i'm minutes. saying not your mom but <laughs> yeah. moms or friends yeah or, yeah whatever. hey go get this you know let's yeah. just go get it yeah. because it's safer it's less harmful yeah. whatever yeah and they go and get it they don't give two shits i mean yeah. and they're still as using crap it. as i put in my lungs dude i didn't i didn't care and yeah, yeah, but that's when I was we're not doing talking about when we were 18. We're all right. Superman when we were 18. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah that's true. That. <laughs> like, yeah, but what I, is that? Oh, I'll try it. <laughs> but I noticed I that when it. I vapor around my, my animals, like our pets, they don't run. But when I smoke a joint, <laughs> they run. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and not even just necessarily a joint, but it's the carcinogenic smoke from the burning yeah. of the foliage, just like yeah. in a cigarette. Yeah. And they run, but they don't run from a vape. That that <laughs> makes me because it's strawberry. You know, it should make Echo. anybody think. Well, <laughs> shit. Okay. Well, I mean, they do. They have those intense senses. You yeah, know, my whole body tries to bite at the vapor in the air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, yeah, they don't run from it, but they run from everything else that we would. Yeah, it, it just it just kind of it just I don't know maybe I'm just real health conscious I'm not really health conscious and, but I just just knowing I'm putting something into my body makes me mm -hmm. want to fucking you know go to WebMD 100. go to fucking yeah. Google don't type go, it out don't, don't go to WebMD <laughs> WebMD is dangerous <laughs> man I'm, man I'm, all I think forms, I three minutes that. later I'm dying <laughs> I got three all of the four things on medical there <laughs> medical industry is all for profit that's how they <laughs> file is for profit. Crazy. <laughs> we all do. We all do, Curtis. Well, so much cash. Yeah, I mean, I'll be the first to admit that you know when I first started vaping, it was because I was getting information from the guy that worked across the hall from me at work. Yeah, you know, and he was like all excited one day, and I'm like, "What are you all chipper about?" And he was excited that his blue kid had come in, and so I'm like, "Oh, really? What's that all about?" So he kind of started to tell me about it. And then that, you know, perked my interest to find out more about it. But I didn't exactly, I don't think at that time there was a whole lot of information like we have today where yeah. I could have really gotten yeah. deep into the science about exactly what I was putting into my body. I mean, he, to me, he was a trustworthy person and I felt like he had done his research. Now, at the time when I got involved, you know, it was like sites like, v2 and blue the siga like stuff you know the kits that were coming out and things like that and of course you know their marketing teams are gonna you know put it out there in the best light possible to get you to buy this thing that's going to get you to quit smoking and stuff and i think really for me that was the primary catalyst it was like okay he found something that's going to help him to quit smoking and maybe I can latch on to this conceptual idea too, because I feel like he's done some background work or he read enough into the, the website to know that, you know, what he bought, you know, was certainly, you know, better for him, you know, and he was, he's an intelligent guy. I mean, it's not like he was just some rub who friggin' you know, stumbled onto it. I yeah. mean, he, he was, you know, went to a good college and, you know, and, and What's, is he a Harvard guy? No, I mean, no, not a Harvard guy necessarily, but I say, you know, he went to a good school yeah. and he had a higher <laughs> education. And so, you know, you kind of, you know, you, you lean a little bit of trust into those people that they kind of, you know, know more than you do, but in general terms anyway. So I felt confident, but at the same time too, you know, there's that part of me where it's like, like, yeah, fuck it. You know, if it doesn't kill me, it makes me better. Right. So. Yeah. Give me, give me. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, one of the things we, we kind of talked about, Tim had an article as of, uh, about a year ago that he talked about uh, where I think it was in England, right, Tim, maybe yeah. that they, they would have these little you would make an appointment to mm -hmm. sit down at a vape shop. Have you guys ever considered trying to do that or can you do that here? Where, where someone's like getting ready to quit smoking, they would go into these vape shops in England, they would set an appointment, they would sit down with an expert, and they would go through asking you the questions that you needed to ask and then try to set you up with a system. Isn't that what it was, Tim? Yeah, so it was a it was a, a brick and mortar um, uh, chain in, in England. And in England, they obviously offered multiple paths for people to find out what they needed to quit smoking. And due to COVID and a lot of the restrictions and the staff not being available to man those actually government run um, agencies, they took their local vape shop and they opened up. It was, I believe it was called Vape Clinic, I believe was vape the clinic, name yeah. of it. I can't remember the name of the actual chain, but inside each shop, they had like a little segmented area that was just designed to take appointments from customers who were looking to quit they would call the shop and they would go hey you know i want to quit vaping or whatever and they would what they would do is they would give those people a targeted 30 minute window to sit down with a like a an advocate or somebody an advisor i believe is kind of like you know your car when you take your car into the shop but you know you could go and sit and you would have focused time and attention with just that person and they would qualify you like nick says they would ask you Go like ahead. how much are you smoking what industry do you work in like what do you do you know figure out your sort of you know situational 
habits that might drive you to smoke more, smoke less, whatever. And then they would give you, they would offer you products that you would purchase at that time. And then they would say, okay, but you know, you go home and try this and see if this works. So they would try to fit you with the right thing. And then they said that they offered returns, like if things didn't work out. So anything that was unopened or unused and stuff like that, they would let you bring it back. And then they would find another alternative for you to maybe shift you to a, a stronger nicotine strength or a different flavor or whatever. It, so they really put the focused attention on that. I felt like that would be a great idea in, in America, you know, for those people who are intimidated by the vape shop experience who might, you know, they walk in and it's like this whole new world and they don't know what to ask for or the right questions to ask. But I think we're a little limited due to the FDA and what we can do in terms of potentially helping somebody. So if they saw that as, you know, something that could be, potentially breaking the rules of the fda where like you can't give medical advice you can't right. say this is better for you or it's gonna you know whatever um but i still feel like vape shops can still give focused help i mean if people have questions you can't exactly sit there and be like well i can't answer that question for you or how do you subvert that like if you someone say, people have told me other yeah. people have experienced <laughs> yeah. potential benefits. <laughs> you can start doing the quotations when you're talking to them. Uh, I want to, well, I want to real quick. I want to, this is bugs me. And the reason this bugs me is because uh, to me, uh, the uh, harm reduction is harm reduction. The alternative hasn't changed. This person had to make this adjustment and changes to keep their doors open. You try keep losing them. 30% of your revenue after right. it ally and see what you do. Cause you have to keep your doors open for the customers. You're still right. trying to help. That's right. And, and to me, I mean, that's that's the thing. The objective hasn't changed for that shop owner. You're still an important part of his business, but he needs to keep his doors open. Do you have to walk past a few fucking bottles of CBD and and, and some bongs? Big fucking deal. Well, go in there, get your shit, and um, get out, get your shit and get out. <laughs> You know, do you, do you not, right. do, you get, do you get mad when you go to Target and you walk down an aisle and there's 15,000 different vitamin C's? Yeah. Fuck, you know, give me a break. Yeah. You know, go Being in, in Colorado, CBD it's impossible. Does not, it doesn't <laughs> sell in my store at all. I, I just, I no mean, offense to have, Slim, I just, that just drives have, me nuts. We have like a couple of Puffco things, but we are 99.8% e-cigarette stuff and it blows yeah. my mind because the name of my shop bud's house of vape but <laughs> i mean you know how many people come in and you guys you guys have any indica or sativa and i'm like no that's next door that's not next here <laughs> <laughs> well that's yeah. medical only and i'm like yeah. dude why would i open up right next door to a competitor <laughs> no yeah. dude i'm like come yeah. on yeah. <laughs> it's just common yeah. sense i, I just but, think that excuse has to change i i mean that whole mm -hmm. reasoning that oh they don't yes. care well, they, they, yeah. they're trying to keep the doors open they're trying they to care keep enough open. to yeah. sell other alternatives right. so we can pay the rent to stay open right. Harm reduction. Or, yeah. or he's going into or that slip the slip not common is that what we're talking about right yeah mm -hmm. And so, yeah, or he's going into those bodegas. He's going into those little right. cheap right. smoke, heady yeah. shops that are just about money and got, you know, really old, nasty stuff. Anyways. Well, you can tell. I mean, you can. Well, obviously, if you live in that fucking town and if it was a head shop when it started, it's a True. head shop. You know, do they yeah. have vape? Maybe. True. Yeah. You know, they put it in wherever in the back or whatever. But you you you, you live there. You know, it was a head shop. You know, if there's yeah. it's, if it's a vape shop and that poor vape shop is having a hard time keeping his doors open and he's got to bring in other products to keep the people coming in. And who knows, you may get the CBD smoker or whatever they do, liquid drinking or whatever. Maybe he's a smoker too. Maybe he hasn't even thought about fucking quitting smoking until he walked into your shop and he saw that you did have it. So, you know, to me, that excuse, it's a, Hey, you know, if it's a head shop, it was a head shop. Okay. Just keep that you in see the comment, Paul. Yeah. Uh, I love that. Mowgli, I, I, I now I know. Now I know. Now I know. This is that's, for the that's, this is that's for the epic. inability to pronounce somebody's name correctly. I just I, yeah, I, I now got the cheat sheet. Oh, okay. John, <laughs> but seeing it. Hold on here, right what, here, right what, there. What, what, I I would, what I would love to see in the United States, and this <laughs> is in this is in every state, right? I don't care how much it's going to cost to get this done. But what the UK, what the UK has done, and putting vape shops into hospitals, 
If you're in hospital yes. and you're a hardcore yes. smoker, yes. if you're a hardcore smoker and you're in hospital, you're in there for two weeks, I want to see a vape shop or someone that can actually deliver you a vape to your bedside so you're not going down while you're attached to all your lines and your arms yeah. and shit or in a wheelchair for that matter. And you have to go outside and go to the other side of the car park so you can have a cigarette. Yeah. Yeah. Give it up. So, Give it up, people. I'd love to see that. While. I was at MUSC in the parking garage and got yelled at for vaping. In the parking garage. <laughs> I what? See what you see I swear stuff. to God, security guy yelled at me and said, you can't vape in here. And I was like, what? I mean, I'm pretty much outside. It's open. And he's yeah. like, oh, you can't use that in there. I'm like. Okay. I was in my car, in, 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 in a garage. In yeah, I was in my in car, a parking in garage a, at MUSC. In a parking garage. Yeah. Yeah. We're the parking lot at this first bank what? center, right up the road from my shop. Was it a yeah, building? If there, if there, it's a building, but yeah. not the part. It's not a parking garage. It's all outdoor parking. If oh, their okay. employees oh. go out there, they can't smoke or vape on the grounds at all. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's here, like school wow. all over again. And these are grown all like across the street huddled. And yeah. yeah, here. <laughs> no, the they hospital. come over to my shop. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, real, qu real quick, I, I looked so. at, I looked up that company in the UK. Um, it, they're called VPZ. That's the, that's the yeah. company name, the vaping specialist. So they have a little blurb here. It's, it says, make the switch with the VPZ vape clinic. Book a free 30 minute appointment today. Quit or your money back. Vape Clinic by VPC, VPZ is dedicated to dedicated one-to-one -one consultation with our e-cigarette specialist. We'll guide you through various cigarette alternatives to find the perfect fit for your needs so that you can start your journey to becoming smoke-free. We'll continue to offer guidance and help you on your cigarette-free journey. And if after yeah. four weeks you're not happy with your cigarette alternative, you'll get your money back. They have now have vape clinics in 151 of their locations. Wow. That, I mean, it took off. Oh, I think it was like nine when we did the article. Yeah, it was only like yeah. nine. See what happens when you have a little common sense? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, thank you. Miracles happen, dude. That's miracles happening right there, yeah. dude. That's. Uh, I, I'm finally curious you now. Out something right. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm curious now. How many hospitals are there in the United States? Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, Google. <laughs> They're like no, liquor they're in gun shops. Yeah, that's, big that's medical, that's medical or medium medical or small that, medical. This is, this is what I'm curious about now. If you could put that model, apply that model of the vape shops in the UK to the hospitals in the United States, the smoking rate would be... The, the smoking rate would be gone in a matter of months yeah you would it's decimate the smoking rate in the 6, united states 6093 it says google that's what google says 6093 6, hospitals yeah wow and it's wow. one like i think it, that's 1 trillion dollars total expenses for all us hospitals 1 trillion or 1 big yes yeah, how many is it wait 1 2 3 4 1 yeah tr <laughs> four, trillion billion. Yeah. yeah trillion trillion that's some bank. Mm -hmm. well, that is private, some bank. private healthcare system. Oh yeah, but then <laughs> then then the pharma companies are going to come after our ass because they're not making their money for the cancer. The FDA is like not on my oh. watch. You're not oh, putting hold, hold on, See, big pharma here, big pharma. Yeah, uh, uh, it ain't happening. Yeah, it's six ninety three no. plus another seventeen hundred ninety six rural community hospitals, and then urban another three thousand three hundred. So yeah, there's a little more. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. A little more. Is that does that count for like the uh, clinic clinic? <laughs> like urgent cares and stuff urgent like care. that. That's, uh -huh. Urgent care. That's exactly. What That's the thinking. biggest fucking scam ever. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm like you have to go to urgent care. I'm like, where is it? It's in this super uh, shopping center. I'm like, yeah. fucking what? Shopping center. Right. Yeah. In, in, right in next a shopping to mall. Urgent Pandora's care. box. Really? So you know you can go get some secondhand yeah, yeah. freaking. I go. This is Kaiser, man. What the fuck, man? We're going to the Rayleigh Shopping Center. <laughs> to go get a shot? <laughs> yeah, next next door to Victoria's here. Secret. I bet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can one. get my wife some panties after I'm then getting my fucking COVID shot. All, all of our Victoria's <laughs> Secrets are in the mall, so they don't put the urgent cares in the mall. They just throw yeah. It's next. It's it's next to the the urgent care will be right next to Panda. Ex
Express and Pandora's box. <laughs> Get lunch <laughs> like, right in between, yeah. And, and, and maybe a home, Starbucks. Yeah, when you get home, your wife's mad at you because you got all this shit. You, you, you stopped at Starbucks. You got me a pair of panties. You stopped yep. at Panda. <laughs> You're uh, just going to get a shot. What the hell? <laughs> oh, oh, man. Well, they, they, they do that for a reason. They, they yeah. just don't want the emergency rooms overloaded well, yeah. with people who have minor problems and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think the clinic idea within vape shops would be brilliant, but unfortunately, I just don't think that it's viable. I think if you stick to the basic questions that are necessary, you know, how much you smoke, what kind of job you have, what is your stress level in the morning at night, when it, you know, stuff like that. I think if you stay away from the health claims, yeah. I think you could still get a general idea of what kind of product you need to give that person. And I think well, you guys are already all doing that anyway. You can always yeah. tell your own personal story too, which is. Yeah. 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 They will call that, they call that anecdotal. All right. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you all they, three. They, have you heard a personal story? Time. Have you heard a personal story and, or someone talking about their habit of smoking? How much have you ever heard one that made you just go, Holy fucking shit. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> not yet. You haven't had the guy that comes in and goes, "I smoke four packs of cigarettes a day." Yeah, yeah my stepdad. I've had that. <laughs> that's my stepdad that. used to yeah, literally right, eating yeah. a sandwich with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth at the same time. Yeah. Four packs. No, of I, that, man. I had one that was came in like three days after he got out of the hospital from a major stroke. Wayne Davis, I got a picture of him on my deal too, and um, came in with a bag full of mixed up. Uh, Kanger Tech, uh, you know, like the internal battery ones, the little bit of the fatter ones. I forgot what the yeah, yeah. ones were. The tubes. Um, yeah. yeah, the tubes, right? With the yeah. big, the sub ohm tank, the 0.5 OCC, the, the bigger OCC or COCC or whatever. And um, came in there with all that, and all he needed was a new coil. So I charged him for the new coil. We spent about an hour helping him because he knew he had to quit smoking. And he was a like a three to four pack a day smoker, heavy, heavy smoker. And, um, yeah, make a long story short, we walked him through it. He was really good. He, you know, he come in and everything and three months or two, maybe two months, month and a half. He came in and it's on a, you know, those old beach tricycles for old yeah. men. Cause he yeah. lived in the neighborhood behind my shop and, you know, got him his juice, got him everything else. He totally switched that day. And wow. Or not that day with the tricycle, but he switched about, he said it took him about three days. He totally switched. I mean, he did it really quick and he just recovered so much. He was off the, he had an oxygen tank also the first time he came in. Um, he was off the oxygen tank and I'm not saying it saved it. It kept him away from that three to four pack and he was able to heal. Yeah. Does that make sense? And it, that's just what was miraculous. And, you know, but because of his severe stroke, like, he was our customer for about six months, but he totally quit. He ended up going to the uh, to a uh, retirement facility. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, but he ended up quitting vaping too, and I don't think he ever smoked again. He didn't know any of his family. He didn't have any family around, so he's kind of like you know, on SSI and stuff. And but we hooked him up, dude. And it was like, yeah, wow. I just helped him out, yeah. But you know, it's just miraculous. And then the other lady, Barb. That I said before, she's in her sixties. We did that. Thank you, she Steve. paid nine. Oh yeah, she paid nine dollars and ninety cents oh, oh, oh. for that for that zero kit and a bottle of juice. You yeah. know what I mean? It's all we charge was nine bucks. She could, we make them tear up the cigarettes and throw them in the garbage and be like, "Fuck you!" We need, you know? we need to make t-shirts with that. You know? We need to make T-shirts that say that. <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> just start handing them out. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so. All right, it's, I got it, a question for you guys. Awesome I don't know if this, you know, how you go about. It. I know Nick. Nick talks about it a lot. You know how he tries to, you know, get other shops more involved in 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 the organization there and advocacy there. Uh, is there somebody? Is that you? Maybe you, or is, is it is are going out and seeing some new shops that are open? Do you guys go out and approach these people and say, hey, you need to be part of this, and you know, we need. I know Allie does. I know Nick does, and. I do when I get a chance to. Yeah. Usually I have to spend time with my grandbaby and, you know, um, but I do go to any city meetings and everything else like that. Um, when I do go into shops that are close to me, I do, I don't make cold calls or anything like that. I just, I, I don't have time for it. 
it's not that it's just my business partner we're like trying to open up a bar or two and getting other things going so we've been really busy with it and just to be honest with you i still chip in i still pay um you know i, I do that uh, because it's i'm hoping and praying for a miracle i'm really yeah. i mean i see some really sad and i don't want to be all depressing people but it's it's not looking john good. i think i think the difference is is that you know the the fact that you know i'm on the board of an organization that is dying for funding versus being a member i mean it's a different scenario to where yeah. shop owners just don't go out and do this i mean it's not right. unless they're you know there's a purpose and that's being a board member of an organization i mean because yeah. a lot of people especially in florida they're running their own business yeah i'm, yeah. I'm fortunate enough to have a team and and that's why i do what i do yeah. Yeah, um, well, I work at my shop every day, just about. Yeah, you know, see, that's and that's the story. There, I mean, so. yeah. Now, how about consumers? I mean, do consumers go in other shops? I mean, how many shops do you have around you? I'll just turn the question around. How do you do? You go in other shops, or do you go to your normal shop all the time? Do you go to shops to talk about it with other people? Who, who me? Join? I go to the same yeah. shop all the time. Yeah, I go to the same shop all the time. I don't. I don't uh, go to any other shop. I just, you know, I used to go to the Planet of the Vapes, but then they shut down and, right. and then switched to Vapor, which is shut down because they were all house juices. So I only got like one Flavor shot. Flavor band. Yeah. 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 Because they were, they just. Yeah, Cali's all, hard. Yeah. They were just, you know, they would mix. They didn't have, they did not have, they did not have one single other company's line on a shelf. Yeah. Not tough. one. Tough. And it, it was all, it was just this big fucking book. You sat at the bar, you flipped the thing open and you just, you know, mm -hmm. that one. <laughs> it's just hard I yeah. mean, for anybody to yeah. to have the time now to travel and be ready to take the brunt of it i mean i've had people from our organization going to shop even around my store they popped in the guys listening to him for two minutes and he goes look i'm not joining your organization i'm gonna politely tell you to get the fuck out of my store and that's the way it went two minutes yeah. right yeah and, and that's just the way the conversation went our true vape shops here is such a small organization in Denver because it's not LA, it's not Houston, it's not Miami, it's not Chicago, it's not New York, it's not Nashville, it's not, you know what I mean? There's so many other cities that are much bigger than the Denver and surround Colorado in general. And a lot of the ones that are like an hour away in Springs and in Pueblo, they have their own organization. They have this organization. There's no Rocky Mountain Smoke Free Alliance, which we were trying so hard. We still are. I mean, I've managed to get manufacturers to chip in money. You know, like we over at Naked, he chipped in and helped us out a ton. Um, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, High On even chipped in back in the day a lot. Um, uh, Kennedy, you know, a lot of other juice makers too. Uh, oh, Baytasia, they chipped in a ton for us as well. You know what I mean? So, so it's not that it's it's like how much do you keep pouring and pouring and, and putting all your sweat and tears into this and, and i'm sorry again this is just the way i'm foreseeing this the way i'm seeing this game play out so you know the game plan it's all about piece, bias politics there are things but the, there are things that we could do okay yeah so some of the conversations that i had here in florida and and i, I did want to go back around to this because you know, when you were talking, I kind of thought, I don't want you, I, I don't think it's going to be dead in five years. I don't think the industry is going anywhere. We may have okay. to navigate through some things, but oh, yeah. we've done that so many times since yeah. the beginning of vaping numb that to we're it. good I'm with numb it. to it. Yeah. So yep. what we've done um, is, and, and I, I can't talk too deep into this, but you know how some states, they can set up with their governor, their own laws and requirements and standards to be able to sell products. We are currently working on a standard in the state of Florida to make it a safe place for vapor products. And um, that's something we're working on and there's a lot to it. There's a lot of legs to it, but we're very confident, especially after these last two days, mm -hmm. that something like that might be coming down where we have a standard for you to operate in Florida. There'll be a fee attached to it, but it's gonna be open state. It's gonna be adult freedoms it's going to be regulated not over it's going to be but it will be regulated and you can do business 
Yeah. See, so I would. When I tell people to join the organization, <laughs> there's a well. A lot of people will move. If I could to go to Florida happens, and do it. I would, but I'm going to tell you this: there's there's people that have been part of this organization that will be a part of what we have going on, and there's people that choose to ignore us until something goes on, and when something goes on, the door may close. Yep. So, yeah. right, that's the right. choice everybody has right now. Yep. Right. If they choose to stick their head in the sand, those are the people will be like, eh. Sorry, guys, yeah. but the ones that choose to step up and do the right thing and listen to what we're saying and be a part of the organization and get the communication, yeah. they will be part of that go forward plan. Mm. And that's just a reality. And Florida is the state to do it. in. Right. Our governor yeah. got reelected. He is not no. opposed to our industry. He's a freedom loving guy. And I'm telling you now that that's what we're working on. So well, we're talking five years down the road. Parenting their kids. And watching what they're doing, so they he's don't about and he's don't. about then, no like crazy regulation stuff. Anything, COVID, bring yeah. it up, bring up the yeah. topic. Right. Let's I know. go. I know. You know, <laughs> so yeah. you can you can drop that list wherever you want, right? And, no, and I we're fortunate no, no. enough to have. You don't even know. Gotten in there. <laughs> I'm a, so I'm a Ron DeSantis all the way. want to be president. I'm and, like, get up, cowboy. <laughs> and everybody is, and it may be there, right? right. So when that happens that model may move to a bigger stage if we do it right. Yeah. Right. So there's a lot to keep in mind based on my last two days and what we really did in the Capitol. It was great meeting people and trying to kill biz and put bugs and plant seeds and hang out and hobnob. So, but the real right. deal was, is what I'm discussing right now. Yeah. That is okay. the real meat and potatoes well, of why I was there. It, there's, well, there's no session. Me. So I had no call reason me later to go except and tell me what's up. Call me later and tell me what's up because well, it's I'm, my I'm passion. Not going I feel to like share I don't... that yet. <laughs> oh, okay. I can't because no, that's fine. it's not I'm that I'm keeping a secret. It's, it's that situation. I don't know the roadmap. We're talking about yeah. yeah. We're talking about the roadmap is being created, right? So okay. I don't have anything right now. That is the, the basic has to be roadmap. That way too, it has to be accepted. Well, I'm sure by them. it has to be. Yeah. has to be accepted, has to be drafted once we have the conversations. Once the schematic is designed, the strategy is designed, we need sponsors, we need bills written. We It's a big monster. Yeah. But okay. I'm here to tell you we have the team to do it. Not this team, but the team up in Tallahassee where shit gets done. Yeah. So Okay. I know all I can say is right. that it, it it's coming and it's looking really good. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I, I think hope there's so. a lot I'm of praying, avenues. So. You don't even know, bro. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm like praying to the creator that, you know. Allie, what were you going to say, Allie? I was just going to say, I, I mean, I know of other things too that are going on. There's, there's always people working towards, I would never say anything, but there's always people <laughs> working towards moving in different directions. This, this industry was created by some innovative innovative ass people and we are not going to just lay down and roll over and let no. anybody take it from us. So we're gonna don't keep get me wrong. Like I said, we're gonna gonna keep fighting. I'm going to be having that back door deal going on. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> you know, I mean, I still believe in this a hundred percent. You know, don't get me. Missing. So the cool thing about this is, is it doesn't have to be back door. This is going yeah. on yeah. in other industries and other products throughout the country. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Needs so why right. can't we do okay. it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the vitamin fucking industry is the big one. I mean, look at the loopholes and bullshit they had to go through, you know? And what now, about the hemp industry, John? The hemp, hemp industry we, as well. We almost, all over. Yeah. We almost had a new governor, but we still got the same one. That's like, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I'll trade you ours for yours. <laughs> nah, it's okay. This one, one is gay and the other one's straight. That's yeah, all. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's all. Um, I don't want you him know here what I mean. Yeah. But, but and that well, I'm just matter. glad. Just, I'm just glad to see. I'm just glad to see you as an owner doing what is needed to keep your doors open and keep your employees employed. I mean, you. I had no idea that you went. You you know you drove all the way to California to fight for a bill that wasn't even part of your state. That's amazing. I That's didn't awesome. drive. I didn't. I didn't oh, you, drive. Flew. <laughs> you flew. Oh, yeah, you flew. flew. <laughs> I, was a, I was making it. I was making you. I was building you up more. I was you know like yeah, no, that's a fucking hung drive, some, man. <laughs> hung out with some really great vape shop owners. It was awesome. Went to this one cat that was in ended. He was in a, uh, uh, what is it, uh, shoot, um, not quite in that city, uh, but like on the outskirts of the city, like an independent, 
area or whatever. I don't know. It was right on the outskirts, uh, but it was going to affect everyone else. And he wouldn't have been included, which, you know, Doomsday. I don't know if you, mm-hmm. met, uh, if you heard of Doomsday, but the, he's up in, uh, up in Sacramento area. And I mean, great shop owner, great little shop. I mean, they, the way they treat their customers is very much exactly what we do, which is open compassion and, and just understanding who that smoker is, you know, and giving them the best thing that they need. Again, not what they want, but what they need, just like what Nick said earlier. It's that's what's crucial about it. And that's what's crucial about keeping these vape shops open. You know, I mean, but I lost so much from ignorance and from ignorance from COVID ignorance and from, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I opened it up in the wrong time. It was a year before COVID. So it was barely starting to get known and then bam, we had to shut down and it just wasn't making any money and we couldn't afford to keep doing it. We shut for six weeks, um, five of our stores and that hurt. Yeah. Because again, to retain our employees, we had to pay them. So it hurt. Right. Uh, right. COVID scared the shit out of everyone. You guys weren't essential in Florida like we were in South Carolina? Well, it wasn't at the time when we were shut down. It came later. Oh, okay. We never we were talking about before. if, we wait a minute, if, if they had COVID, you had to pay them, right? No, no. Oh, no. We, just didn't, we didn't have to shut down at all. We, oh, we, um, so well, we went into like we work at, in like the upper management. We actually went and worked in the stores when people were sick just to keep everybody yep. open. But we got essential status from the governor, which I figured you guys did in Florida too. Yeah, we did. We did, we did they, get essential had... status, and it was local commissions, not yeah. the state. Yeah, we were open. The Santa's the kept everything here. open. Yeah. But these commissioners were shutting them down in yeah. Pinellas we're... County and stuff. We were open and you called in your order and then you drove there and then someone would walk out and hand you your stuff. Oh, we had caution tape and the the barriers and all kinds of stuff. Well, no curbside, no stores. We were shut down as non-essential. And in fact, I said, no problem. So I did that where they would call me, they would pay over the phone. They would come and they would only be people in my system. And they would pay me, and I would, uh, as soon as they drove up, I would hand them their bag through the door and close it and shut it down, had my open sign off, so I didn't take any new people, yep. okay? And I was delivering to some of my elderly customers that weren't too far, so I'd drive it out to them, and awesome. one of their neighbors or whatever called in, no, hold on, wait, wait for it, <laughs> wait for it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so one of, their, one of her neighbors, and I know exactly who it was, one of her neighbors had called in the um, health board. And complained. So the head of the Jefferson County uh, Health Board called me, or called the shop, and I was there. And I answered, and he goes, "You're not well. You're not open because you're not essential." And da 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 da. And I got a complaint, and, and I said, "What?" I said, you know. So I started getting into it. I started getting really, really like, "Fuck you! This is my right." You know, it, it's there's no, it's not no law. I can stay open. I'm abiding by all your rules and everything. I'm, you know, doing yeah. this. It's not open to general public. I have to ID people. So I, you know, clo- I have the off, the open sign turned off. And he's like, well, well, okay, well, calm down, calm down. He goes, do you sell any <laughs> CBD? And at the time I was selling these little tincture bottles of CBD, like one little brand had three little options, you know, of sh- tincture CBD. Cause I believe in that for, you know, people to, to drink it and be able to feel better or whatever, you know, because it's great for nervous system and stuff like that. So, bam, freaking, he says, oh, well, you're essential. And I'm like, what the, and I almost got pissed because I was just what? like, wait a second. I was like, wait a second. This CBD is the wild, wild west. We yeah. don't know what the hell's in this. There's nothing turned into the FDA. I know in 2016, all this juice that I'm selling, all their ingredients is with the FDA. <laughs> and if it was toxic as fuck, they would have banned us six years ago or four <laughs> years ago or whatever. You, I mean, you feel me? And it's like, what are you talking about? But I didn't go there because I'm just like, whatever, fuck you. Turn down my open sign. <laughs> Man, bought some tape, dude. Tell him, Man, just stay back, dude. Oh, your shirt over your face. Right there, dude. Fuck you. <laughs> I was just like, I, I didn't care at that point because when they're going to do that and not use the common sense of just data itself right there in its own face. It's like, fuck you, whatever. 
That's fucking great. Oh, your CBD, your essential. <laughs> Open up. <laughs> oh, right. And I only got one little tiny little. I was like, uh, no MQ on this situation? No minimum order quantity or anything? Nope. You got one little thing in there? You're open. I'm like, yeah. wow. Uh, COVID's fake as fuck, or I don't know what the fuck. Yeah. I feel like yeah. That was your Twilight Zone. But I wasn't going to argue. I said, oh, no. You got the. Yeah, oh, fuck yeah. A- any yeah. Like, other questions there, Paul? Paul, you got a question? Paul, you've been quiet tonight. I'm trying to be quiet because I've been biting my tongue regarding we we've just been handed something today that marches now either D Day or it's going to be hang on to your underwear one of the two but <laughs> which which day in March uh, we don't know yet but it seems that they're waiting for the New Zealand study to shut before they make the decision, but we already know what the decision is, which is plain packaging, 20 milligrams, prescription only. But I, I'm going to laugh my ass off. You know, if we need to get a prescription for hardware, how many prescriptions uh-huh. are actually... What no, the but, WTF, no, people? Oh, my no, God. No, no, no. What the fuck? But how many prescriptions <laughs> will I will I actually need for what's in my cover? <laughs> yeah, that's just what I was going to say. I I'm like, <laughs> Australian big pharma companies. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, fuck. You. Shit, wow. I've, I've got like 10 devices on my desk and well over 100 and oh whatever my in my cupboard. How many prescriptions will I actually need? Do I need a prescription now for each individual device? What the fuck? No. You, need you get caught on the street with the wrong device, you'll be in some trouble. Paul. I well, well, that, that's another question because when I go fishing, I've got one in my pocket, one in my tackle bag, and then one, you know, yeah. stashed yeah. in my backpack. So how the hell is yeah, this going to? How the hell is this going to work? This this is my Vupu prescription. Hold on, let me get yeah, my. Yeah, hold on. This is yeah. the Vupu one. Yeah, this is the Dot Mod one. I, <laughs> But look, it reminds I, me I, of when marijuana I, 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 became I, I, legal in this state. No, I, I, <laughs> like, I'm well, just here's this caregiving person. Here's this. No, I, I, I'm just going to carry my book with me. Yeah, That's my prescription. Book. Fuck off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right, right. <laughs> that's that's how I'm gonna see it. That's it. Tell, Game over, bitch. Tell, open up another department and make IDs with everything on it. We got technology. What the hell? Oh, they want to no, do it all no, on paper. No, no. Yeah, those no, are some go. serious fines in Australia, dude. They take they they, they 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 don't just take your blood. They take your heart, your lungs, your kidneys. <laughs> First <laughs> form. <laughs> but you don't. But I'll, I'll but I'll give you a heads up. Um, a friend of mine. Yes, sir that I used to work with down in Melbourne, uh, he got fined $90,000 for, no, just oh. advertising a vape product. Oh, my okay? God. No way. Mm. Just for advertising? Yeah. Yeah, there's serious fines over there. I mean, they're not messing around. Reminds me of uh, Nevada with their no tolerance on marijuana back in the day. Oh, back in the day. Yeah, you went to, yeah, you went three, to jail. Three to yeah. five. Hell yeah. yeah, three Hell to yeah. ten in, in for a seed, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, what? Yeah. Nazi much? <laughs> but, but, yeah. I, I love all the guys back then. They used to say, well, I don't live here. And they're like, we don't care. <laughs> you're, you're in the state right of Nevada. Off. You're not supposed to be smoking weed. Even better. Yeah. It means you got money for travel. Yeah. yeah. And and yeah. I was I was given this the other day, right? This is now what we're dealing with. You got your normally they're me- prescription they're, mine. No, no. <laughs> normally they're meant to have all the warnings and all the harsh photographs and shit on them. This oh, is what's God. turning up. This is what's <laughs> turning up in, in Australia. <laughs> I don't know if it's big enough play. though. It's I don't think it's big enough. <laughs> I think it should be ninety percent. Awesome! It should just oh, say, oh, just no, just say no, marble no, in small no, print at the very top. No, but, but try when you vaping. Smoking yeah. yeah. kills. When try you, vaping. When you flip it around, this is the other side of it. <laughs> Jesus, That's a twenty thousand dollar fine. Smoking way, I can barely read. Uh, oh, slow, go. slow and painful death. <laughs> vaping doesn't. Oh Jesus! <laughs> Are you for real? Is that real? That is, is that like satire. Is it? It's real. No, that's wow. This is a, that's really that's fifty. Real. The back is fifty percent. No, no. no but did, you <laughs> did you smoke all those today? Did you smoke? Did you kill them all this, in one day? This, this was. This you was given to me. It was full. 
<laughs> that, oh, yeah, all right. This was given. This was given to me. Okay, this is part of the black market that we've got running here in Australia. Oh, wow. These all oh. these all have a duty free tag on them, right? Okay. No. Oh. The this is quite interesting. You can buy, from what I was told, a pack of these for twenty Australian dollars. But you want to buy a pack. A, a pack of regular cigarettes here in Australia is thirty two fifty now. Yeah, thirty two fifty yeah. for a pack of cigarettes. God damn. If that's not enough uh, to get you to start vaping, I don't know what is. I mean, geez, okay. Okay. what's the conversion, Paul? What's damn. Conversion? Um thirty thirty two fifty Australian is twenty seven, twenty six, twenty seven US per pack. Whew, I bet damn. you they never have to clean out ashtrays in Australia. Uh, uh, <laughs> they the smoke them all the way to the dude, filter dude, there, man. Dude. Even the workers are like, "Fuck it, there's a no, dude, go to go to a, go to a <laughs> pub here. <laughs> go 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 to a pub here or to a like a an, a club like a a football like club, like a disco or whatever. Oh, okay. Oh no, no, a football club like a where they've got football fields and there's poker machines. Okay. And, and oh, okay. You can dine and everything like that in the poker machine area um every person smokes a cigarette there's dude that's almost two bucks a lucy wow yeah that's, that's almost two bucks a lucy right there yeah man. yeah hell $2 yeah a cigarette. Yeah. yeah that's right and they're funny. they're yeah. actually selling do i now eat there's... today or do i skip me a pack of cigarettes <laughs> well, well that cigarette may kill my hunt for a wait a minute bit, paul but... oh i see i see a business opportunity here <laughs> well, in, 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 in what? I'll ship you Marlboros all day. <laughs> Marlboros Dude. all day. <laughs> Dude, you, you've got no I'll idea that. Is here now. Like 13 bucks here? Oh, man. Nah, here <laughs> but uh, the, the other really interesting part is now that we found that the China tobacco is actually bringing in they're called double happiness or something. It's in a little gold pack. It's like a crush proof pack. And there's no warnings on it whatsoever. They clone cigarettes for crying Oh, hell yeah. Loud. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. Jeez. It's, no, it's hilarious. We're, we're still trying, trying to, to find out. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're still, we're still trying to, we're still trying to find out where these are from. And Mexico. These are, no, these are, no, <laughs> no. these are. Like, <laughs> China. No, these are these are legit Marlboros, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, from oh, okay. No, they're legit because yeah. the bar the barcode takes me straight to. It, it's the guy website. that's loading the truck that oh, goes, my. "Oops, this box fell off." Is there one with <laughs> like pictures of 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 tar filled lungs like they do in Europe? No, 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 no. These are meant to be plain packaging. This is the first packet that I've seen. Yeah. That like from a major it's, brand that is floating around here on the streets. That's in, crazy. In, wow. and, no, in the, the way, the only, the only way I knew that I was buying a counterfeit pack of camels back then here was the, it was the foil on the inside. It was never the gold foil. It was always a, a silver foil. Silver? As soon as, yeah. yeah, as soon as I had opened it up and look and see that silver foil, I would walk right back into the store and say, "Hey, give me, uh, give me my money back, or give me a legit pack of fucking camels because these aren't these are from Mac they were coming in from Mexico, and a couple yeah. of stores would have them." Hey guys, we're at the two hour mark. I want to thank both of you, Bud and Nick, for coming on and sharing uh, your guys' experience guys. in the babe shops. Yeah, and uh, definitely, it's great to see that you know both of you guys are doing what it takes to keep your doors open and keep your employees uh, employed. Yep. And that's uh, great. And Allie too. Allie too. Yeah, Allie. <laughs> Allie's in there. Allie knows. And that's, and that's why I, I, I wanted to have you guys on. It's just to kind of share with the experience with everyone out there. That, well, what's going on with you guys? What you guys are going through, you know? Everybody's always talking about the distributors and the vendors mm -hmm. and the websites. And I think the small business side of it has gotten forgotten. It's being forgotten. So it's good to hear your guys' story. And, 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 and hopefully everyone understands, you know, why things are the way they are when you go to an event. <laughs> <You know, that's> yeah. <laughs> We're not here to intimidate. We're here to help you just stay away from those cigarettes. 
yeah, that's, I, it. that's oh, it. I think, I think that, uh, uh, you know, for me, like I said, it's school. It was school for me. It was being able to go in there and learn about things and learn, learn what juices I, I say juices, I'm sorry, liquids that I liked and what I didn't like. And, you know, and then I would go and, you know, and, and go home and, and one of the things you guys talked about, I would love that the building part come back, coils, being able to buy coils and have them and build them. Because for me, that's what kept me smoke free at night. Because I, yeah. I swear to God, I had a mason jar, three mason jars full of coils that I would make. I would just buy wire. And then at nights, you know, to keep myself, my hands busy, like you were talking about, I would just wrap coils all fucking night and cut them, put them in the jar, cut them, put them in the jar. So, yeah, I hopefully. I've hopefully, got a ton of we used to have cotton killer claptons and cotton killer wire and mm -hmm. it was a rebranding from kidney puncher because we yeah. love kidney puncher at swiss forge it was just the cleanest wire ever and um yes we had it registered with the fda back in 2016 because mm -hmm. we were established in 2015 yep. and um they said we could not install them yep yep i remember so yeah. I bailed it out. I was like, whatever. 2016, so now we, baby. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. we got like two to 3,000 of these coils that we've made for. So yeah. let me know where you're at. I'll ship a bunch of them out to you guys. If you yeah, want. I, 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 I felt I so bad for you for your little spawn. Yeah, I, <laughs> so, I felt so bad for that kid that worked in that shop because he was 19. And he was just, yeah. he made the most amazing fucking coils. And I was like, I'll be, I'll be honest. I was a little bit, I didn't know what kind of what was going on, but walking into that shop and I go where I think his name was Chris. Hey, where's Chris? He goes, we had to fire. We had to let him go. He can't work here any longer. And I was just like, and then I looked down at the counter, all the RDAs are gone. All the wire was gone. I was like, what the fuck is going on? He goes, where have you been, John? And I go, uh, yeah, T20, <laughs> yeah, T, yeah, T21. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I'd eight, 16 changed everything for yeah. all of us. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Well, I want to thank Paul, both I got you the guys. same mod. Yep. Yeah. What the stubby? Oh, the stubby? Yeah, absolutely. That's beautiful. That's nice. We got it's some so, really tiny. I just don't like, like the that. name. I just don't like no, the name. It's, <laughs> it's so fucking small. <laughs> just, so bad. I just don't like bad. the name. <laughs> Could have come up with a better name. So it well, runs the old cables down in there, like the RSST into that tank. Yep. I loved it. Yeah. I still oh, got a yeah, spool yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, this thing, this uh, this tank. No word of a lie. The flavor out of this, I was, I was quite shocked. And I, I've had a lot of conversations with Sam over this device, but this device, this changed it's a my banger. whole. It, it changed my whole perception. I I love what Aspire did with the box, right? Yeah. The same like sun box and that. But yeah. this thing, this thing <laughs> is next level. I love it. <laughs> All right, guys, we have to get out of here again. Thank you, yep. Nick. Thank you, Bud, for joining us. I uh, hope yeah, everybody sure. had fun uh, listening to the stories. Uh, we'll try to bring in some other vape shops uh, uh, as during the week, but uh, during our next couple shows. So I uh, hope to see everybody next Wednesday. Thank you, Allie, Tim, Paul, and uh, Nick and Bud. Thank and you, Allie. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. Thank you. We'll thank you, Bud. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs>